Sitco ACC Game of the Week is being brought to you by your neighborhood Sitco. Proud to support today's athletes. Sitco, we know you. By Altel, are you connected? By Cooper Tires. Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. By Advance Auto Parts, where the best part is our people. By Ice House. At Plank Road Brewery, we'll make the Ice House, you make the ads. For details, go to icehouse.com. And by BB&T, Branch Banking and Trust Company. The setting is perfect for the 47th renewal between these two teams in a series dominated by Clemson 30-15-1. And, and with more on the importance of this game for these two teams, the third member of our broadcast crew, Mike Hogwood. Stephen, while these teams are not competing right now for the ACC championship, you're right, they do have a lot at stake, particularly Duke. Duke's a team that broke a long losing streak this season, but in the ACC, it's been 22 games since they have won in the league. That's not to say there haven't been some close calls, like the game against Virginia. Boy, the defense was great, held the cast to just two yards rushing, but still they couldn't come away with the win, losing by a score of 27-22. Then a couple weeks later, how about the game at NC State? Adam Smith had his best game as a Blue Devil. Late, Duke's making a comeback. That touchdown pass breaks the Blue Devils to within five. The onside kick, it's recovered by Duke. They have a chance in a last second long field goal, can't hit it, and they lose a close one, 24 to 22. So there have been some close calls for Duke, but they say moral victories don't count now. They want one in the win column in the ACC, and they hope it's today against Clemson. Now for the Tigers, here's a team that needs two wins here in the month of November to become bowl eligible. This is an important game if Clemson hopes to go bowling when the season Season is over. The Tigers are ready. The Blue Devils are ready. We're ready for an ACC battle between Clemson and Duke. Next. There's Coach Carl Franks, head man of the Duke Blue Devils, looking for a first ACC win in 22 battles. Of course, Tommy Bowden, 26 and 18 in his fourth year as head coach of the Clemson Tigers. Duke won the opening toss, and they have deferred their option to the second half, and that's the man who can bring it back all the way, Derek Hamilton. You saw Brent Garber, the kicker. Of course, Justin Miller's no slots back there either, and he may get first call on this one at the 12-yard line. Justin Miller, true freshman, breaks the seam, and Mark Thompson will bring him down at the 35 yard line and that's where Duke or Clemson will start out. Willie Simmons was the starter but here's how he struggled against NC State and the turnover here is a positive play doc and all of a sudden disaster starts. Yeah I mean a highly ta talented player great skills a true leader but has just not been uh, real lucky with the football and Charlie Whitehurst from Duluth Georgia redshirt freshman season 180 yards and a touchdown first play from scrimmage would go to Yusef Kelly and Kelly will push up over the 36 yard line and it'll be a run of about a yard our Chevy starting lineup show Kevin Youngblood sore shoulder and all leading receiver on the team Bernard Rembridge had Jasmine Derek Hamilton Ben Hall up front Gary Bird the oldest of a young offensive line for Clemson and second down, here comes Whitehurst to the corner, calls his own number and stretches out for another yard after the 37-yard line. Let's take a look at the Duke defense. Sean Johnson, third in the ACC in tackles for loss. Zelensky, Thompson, and Harris in there with him. Ryan Foster, again up near 100 tackles with three games remaining. And the secondary, led by Terrell Smith, who also has two interceptions on the year with Stanford and Alex and Brian Green. Third down coming at about eight for the Clemson Tigers. Charlie Whitehurst under center into the shotgun. Rambert is his setback. Three step drop and a fire is complete to Kevin Youngblood. And it's good for the first down after the 47 yard line. God, it made it look easy. And that's what you want out of your offense. You know, I don't care what kind of offense you run. The bottom line to it is that to move the chains, you want simplicity. There it is. Nice route, ball right on the numbers, right on the hands. Good catch, and you move the sticks. Gain of 11, makes the first down. Whitehurst to throw, ball tipped, but caught just the same. Out in the flats, this is young blood again. But not much on the play. Probably about four or five yards on the quick hit. 
Brian Green on the, Brian Green on the tackle. Yeah. Young Blood who's sat out last season with a broken leg and has been suffering with a shoulder problem. One of three big wide receivers that are going to present a problem for Duke defensively. Blitz is on pass complete up the middle to the tight end. That's Hall. He's brought down in Duke territory at the 25 yard line. It'll be a gain of 22. Well, Jamie and Small on the stop. Hey Steve, Charlie, if Charlie was suffering from any butterflies, he sure got rid of him quickly. Now you watch a little play action. Nice little saving block by big Greg Walker. And the ball comes in. Ben sucks it down and gets downfield. That's a good operation again for the Tigers. Whitehurst out of the no huddle. The pass is complete. And it's to the corner there. And that is going to be J.J. McKelvey. Out of Monk's Corner, South Carolina. He's a senior. Got three receivers at 30 or more, and McKelvey is one of them. 501 yards on the season and two scores. Yeah, their triplets have been quite productive for Clemson. Five yard gain brings up second and five. Hand off Rembert. Rembert cuts off the right side of the line, and this is a nice looking Clemson drive. Now down to the 12 yard line, it's a gain of almost nine. Fowler and Green come up and make the tackle, but uh, Clemson has got it going and fast forward, Doc. Got it going in those guards. Big Greg Walker, we're talking about the 330 pounder. You watch him, he comes out of here, watch him get around, get the seal block. That's, a, I mean, that's the way you want it. Small win, 225, no match. First down play, Rembert runs into his own lineman and then gets tied up there by Brendan Dewan. Redshirt freshman out of Austin, Texas, makes a, a tackle right there at the line of scrimmage. Oh, Dewan at the bottom of the pile. Who says you can't make a tackle line down, you know? <laughs> he came out of the grass to make the play. Red Rufins presents this look at red zone proficiency for the Clemson Tigers. 62 percent, 18 touchdowns in their 29 trips. Back to throw, Whitehurst rushes on. He'll get to the corner and step out of bounds for a loss on the play. And they mark him out at the 19 yard line and that'll be a loss of eight. Well, Ted Roof's guys on defense, they're coordinated. They did a great job. This is a benefit of film studies. They saw screen developing. And those guys, and there's Big Ted, they saw screen developing and reacted to it and took away where he wanted to go with it. So that's just great benefit of a good film study minus eight minus nine on the play brings up third down and 18 and pushes Clemson back to the Duke 20 yard line young blood to the top we got a whistle and the penalty will stop this play the sack and the penalty threatening to grind down Duke's nice drive from the 35 yard line Duke might have tried to give some back on this one Dead ball, offside, defense, five yards. So, five yard penalty will back them to or push them to the 15 yard line. And that'll set up a third and 13. Get a first down at the two. Robinson and Hamilton. The forward receiver set wide to the wide side of the field. Here's Whitehurst over the middle. Touchdown. Kevin Youngblood. Boy, it made that look easy. He hit five straight, Doc. Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's on a roll. Ball perfectly thrown. What Ted Roof is shaking his head about is the pass protection. I mean, no blue shirts get around Whitehurst. Boy, that's just like being out in practice. Good operation. Youngblood's second touchdown reception of the year. And Aaron Hunt on for the point after. And it is good. The Clemson Tigers strike quickly. In a little over four minutes, they march down 65 yards for the score. A connection to Kevin Youngblood back after this message from Advance Auto Parts. ACC football is brought to you in part by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Back at Wallace Wade, Clemson strikes first, a 14 yard hookup from Charlie Whitehurst, who completed all five passes attempted that drive to Kevin Youngblood, who caught three of those five passes. But it was a big 22 yard hookup with the tight end that pushed them deep into Duke territory. Just so observant. You don't miss anything. And the little things like going to 
one of the more talented positions on the field. The tight end. To make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> Even Fur on the kick. And this is Santario Landrum with a reception at the five yard line. Oh, my the really reception awaits him at the 13, actually off to the 18 yard line. Let's take a look at that touchdown again. Well, to me, it all starts with the big hosses up front. I mean, that it can't be any cleaner for a quarterback. And there's Charlie Whitehurst. Got the call all week long. Tommy Bowden said game time decision. And there's Adam Smith. Adam Smith out of Orindo, California. He's a sophomore. 58% of his passes completed, seven touchdowns, and only four interceptions. One of ten players with four interceptions or fewer in 200 attempts. The throw to the flats complete. This is Lance Johnson, and Johnson gets out of bounds at the 26 yard line, and it's going to be a gain of about uh, eight yards. Chris Douglas, a breakaway back, joined by Alex Wade, Landrum, Sharp, and Roland, the skill receivers. And up front, Drew Stroney. Starting his 29th game at tackle. A good one. That's a big line too, Doc. Lewis, Bear, Wilson, and Mitchell. Big Mitch. Second down coming. It's an eight-yard gain on first. The pass to Lance Johnson. Second down and two. Smith rolling right. He'll keep it and get met. Short of the line of scrimmage and brought down there by Khalid Vaughn and also Nick Eason. As we look at the Clemson defense this way, Eason. Four sacks on the season. That's second on the team to Brian McNeil. Khalid Vaughn and Donnell Washington complete the front four. John Leak is a good one up near us. the century mark in tackles with Rodney Thomas and Eric Sampson. Brian Mance, five interceptions, 11 on his career. Bodrick, Meekins, and Justin Miller. A loss of the play of one. A hole and deep into Clemson territory at the 30 yard line. Brian Nance makes a saving tackle. 45 yards on the play. Well, Duke has his own version of confidence on the offense. They start off with a nice pitch and catch for eight yards and, and then have a bad play on the second. But how about this? Great hook on the edge. That's where it all starts. Andy Rowland, the tight end. And at this point, O. Douglas is scooting. It's not supposed to be that easy. 4.6 average is going to grow considerably for that 45 yard count. First yeah. and 10. Big block by Andy Rowland. The tight end. Oh, well. Oh, uh -huh. really? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> what a coincidence. Darrell Scott wide to the top side. Elliott into the slot. Here's Alex Wade feeling his way off left tackle. And he pushes the pile ahead to about the 26 yard line. John Leak and Dewan Polk. Breaking down. Wade had a great start to the season, but a lot of people, Doc, have been kind of putting a lot of people in the box against Duke the last three or four weeks. Well, because Duke's offensive line, I mean, really made a statement early on in the season that they would and could rush the football on anybody. Second down and seven. Smith out of the shotgun. Hit as he threw. It is complete to the tight end. That's Kalen Powell, the backup tight end from Bellevue, Washington. And he gets inside the red zone. He's at about the 10 yard line. Well, Roland and Powell really give the Blue Devils a dynamic duo. We talked about the running backs, these two tight ends. I mean, you talk about getting hit. That's great concentration by Powell. He had to stay with this. This tough guy, Smith, knew he'd be hit, took on the blitz. And again, that's the kind of operation you want out of your offense. A six man rush that time with the two backers leak. And also Bodrick coming in. It's a gain of 18. First and goal at the nine yard line for Duke. Threatening to come right back and tie this game up. Draw play. Douglas diagnosed. Bryant McNeil got the ball carrier shortly after he received the football. Not fooled at all. And our Red Roof Inns look at Duke's red zone proficiency. 29 possessions this season. 13 touchdowns. Seven field goals, the touchdown percentage of 44 percent. The loss on that play is minus four. Duke has got to have that attitude he had against NC State, not against Maryland last week, but against NC State when they took it down to the wire. Three wide out, single back. That's Douglas for Adam Smith on second and goal from the 13. No time and a sack for Smith as he goes down. Nick Eason is there along with John Leak. Duke gets in reverse. Boy, Big East. Big East. 
Coming in from the defensive line, John Levitt, defensive coordinator for the Tigers. He sent out the dogs on that one. And that was a tenacious effort by the Clemson Tigers. First sack of the afternoon for a Clemson front group that has 16 sacks coming in. There's Nick Eason. He and Bryant McNeil are having a great year defensively. Oh, that's the key. When you get those guys on that defensive line that can give you upfield pressure. Third and goal from the 20 after the loss of seven. Handback pass. It is complete. Douglas touchdown Duke. Thrown by Daryl Scott. Reception by Chris Douglas. A 20 yard hookup. Great call. Oh, call. My goodness. That is an outstanding call. And you, they have to execute it. Carl Franks can call it. But, buddy, they ran it to a T. And as an offensive player, you go through those plays maybe 10, 20 times a week or so in practice just to be sure. And then Carl calls it and they execute. Just as he drew it up. Out of the hold of Wisp away, Garber with the kick. And we have a tie ball game at the 8.29 mark here in the first quarter. Each team strikes on their first series. Duke gets it done on a halfback pass. It's going to go to the wideout, Daryl Scott. He finds Chris Douglas wide open. We'll return after these messages from your local ACC station. A little flash and dash by Duke to score the touchdown. I wonder if uh, I wonder if Adam Smith gets a hockey assist on that because there were two passes thrown on the same play. Yeah. One to the flats to Daryl Scott and the second one to Douglas a 20 yard hookup for a touchdown that capped an 82 yard march in eight plays. 316 so both teams don't waste any time getting down the field. Well, I really like the way uh, the Scott set up. You can tell this kid is taking a few snaps in his day. Yeah. Because he set up real well, was calm, collective, and he's, a big play. Yeah, he's got good size too. Mm -hmm. Justin Miller, second kickoff return for him at the mouth of the end zone. Heads to the right, left side, and down the sideline, still on his feet. And they're rolling. Yeah, out to the 40 yard line, and the Clemson Tigers are going to get excellent field position at the 42 yard line. 41 yard return, but let's see this play again by Duke. But what I like about Watt Scott, see, just cool, calm, collective, spiral, you know, just steal it. And here's Miller on the return. Justin Miller, true freshman, turns on the Jets and breaks some tackle. Well, great balance again. Here's a kid runs with good confidence and had a lot of help from his friends. 41-yard return, first and 10 at the 42. Charlie Whitehurst, who connected five straight times, yet to throw an incompletion. Toss back to Rembert, and Rembert is met. And I mean met by Ryan Fowler, right at the line of scrimmage and driven back for maybe a loss of one. Steve, it seems like Ryan Fowler has been making plays here at Duke for at least 10 years. <laughs> I mean, that kid has played some good football for this university. He's a heck of a player. Even as a redshirt freshman, he led the team with tackles. He's in his junior season. He's out of Reddington Shores, Georgia. On second down and 11. Pass complete out there in the flats. He just came to Calvi at the 46 yard line. It'll be a hookup on the play of about uh, five. What would bother me if I were Duke at this point is the fact that you, know, you look at the setup now and the pass operation for Whitehurst, and he's just not had any, any pressure. No. And he's sitting back now, he's calm, and he's throwing balls right on the numbers. I mean, he's going to be tough to deal with. He's got confidence after that first drive. He's six for six on the day. He's got Hamilton in the slot, but Kelby way out wide. Aries Curry is the wide out of three wide out set for Clemson. Looking to the top side, Whitehurst gets it to Rembert, completing the 50, and into deep territory at the 43. What I like about this kid is that when he throws the ball to receivers, it gives them an opportunity to catch and run. You know, most of his balls have been right high, right at the top of the numbers. So you get a chance to look the ball in and take off. I mean, I'm very impressed with this guy's placement of the football. 11-yard gain on the pass to Rembert. Inside handoff, Rembert this time. And not an awful lot going up to the 40-yard line. Clemson coaches kind of talked a little bit with concern about their inability to move the ball on the ground. Well, they've had some special people. It's Tommy West here that takes an overview at his offense. You know, Woodrow Dancer, and I just don't think people realize how tough it is to replace a guy oh, yeah. with, you know, his wizardry. I mean, this guy was unbelievable. Here's Whitehurst on the corner. Pitch goes to Rembrandt. He fumbles the football. 
Picks it up at the 48-yard line, and Fowler drives him out of bounds at the 49. On the a loss on the play of nine on the ill-fated pitch. Yeah. Did not, they did not have a good relationship in terms of running the option. You, know, you need good spacing in this, and you really like to have your quarterback going downhill. And in this case, he just didn't get to. First of all, he had somebody on him after the snap. And Bernard just didn't look the ball in. And that's really been the problem uh, with Clemson football. They've been their own worst enemy. Turnovers have come out of the quarterback position most recently in the 38-6 loss to NC State 10 days ago. This is third and 16 on the loss of line on the play. Back is Whitehurst to throw. Steps up, fires over the middle and nearly intercepted. Oh, should have been gone. Oh, Giuseppe That's Aguano. Fowler. Fowler had that one. Oh, yeah. And Aguano stepped in and knocked it away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That was a jailbreak. That might have been a catch and score. I mean, Ryan would have had to get on his horse, but that might have been a catch and, and score. And I really thought, you mean, Char Charlie had a lot of time. Do you see Whitehurst walking off, shaking his head? Because he realizes, you know, that was his first bad decision with the football. Yep. Harry Sharp is back there to get the kick. This is Wynn Kopp, who's had two block on him this year. It's a good one out to Sharp at the 14. And Sharp brings it out to about the 20 yard line. It'll be a six yard return after the 36 yard punt. So Duke at the 20 as they force the punt with the big sack and the near incompleted pass or near intercepted pass. It's tied at seven all six and a half to play in the first. Duke's defense stiffens a fumble on a pitch play and a near intercepted pass. The fans finally have something to cheer for. Team right now that feels it's got a good chance to knock off Clemson today. They're tied at seven, first and ten from their own 20. Chris Douglas over right tackle, and he gets up to about the 23-yard line. Nick Eason and Eric Meekins on the stop, and let's turn it over to Mike Hogwood. Well, number 45 for Clemson is John Leak. He's the second-leading tackler in the ACC, but he's the one who made the mistake on that touchdown pass. He missed his key. When they came off, they were talking about it. He was really upset on the sideline. He told his teammates, I blew that one. I won't make that mistake again. That's a play that they worked on that uh, in pass uh, during practice this week, and John Leak bit on the fake, didn't make the right read, but he doesn't make many mistakes. That's why he's sitting on the sidelines this time around for a few moments. Second down and eight after the two-yard gain. Fake handoff, play action pass is complete. And it's good enough for a Duke first down, complete to Kalen Powell, his second reception of the afternoon. It's a nine-yard hookup. Well, you know, John, uh, John Lee didn't have anything to, to worry about because he took the fake because Chris Douglas had a 45-yard run in that drive, so it was legitimate. Just like now, the linebackers had to bite because Duke has shown they can run. And if you get that going, Steve-O, you can set up play action. Which is what really... Paul Franks wants to do it. Here is Alex Wade on top of the horse and up to the 45-yard line. That's nice brutal. game. 13. That was, that was a brutal run. Here's Mom. <laughs> That's my boy. That's my boy, number 37. That's my boy, 37. <laughs> Go for it, Mama. That's Linda Wilson. Alex Wade's mother. She's looking on and pretty happy with number 37's gain of the day of 13 yards. Well, you know he ate her out of house and home. <laughs> That's the least he can do is provide some thrills. Crosses the 50-yard line on the carry. Adam Smith tucks it under and picks up some yardage. Rodney Thomas, Eric Sampson on the stop, but keep moving the ball forward for the Duke Blue Devils. Yeah, I remember how my, the metabolism worked in those days. You know, you're collegiate. And you just a bust throw. You, you saw through cabinets, refrigerators, you know, milk. I mean, I mean, I, the beating out, the whipping that I put on my mother's refrigerator. I can imagine what it's like now. If she can't sit down in the stands. She gets too excited. We saw why. Second down at three. Pitch now comes to Wade, and he can't get around the corner because John Leak is there. Yeah, and he beat a good football player in Colin Powell. And it's a John Leak. Again, that's why I, I said I know why he bit because they earned that. Now you watch John keep good shoulder relationship. Didn't get hooked, never gave it up. That's a big time play by an outstanding linebacker. Well, they gave back all seven of the yards gained on the previous play by Adam Smith and then added one more, two more. Third down and 12. Third down conversion here key for Duke there next to last in the ACC in this department. 
Fake the inside handoff, pass to the flat, complete to Lance Johnson. He's at midfield, but he's shy of the first down in Clemson territory at the 49-yard line. But both teams, I mean, defensively, the philosophy is they want to make you earn it. They want to make you go long distance to get a score. And uh, the two drives we opened up with, I mean, that's not going to be the way it goes all game. No. But it's just great to see the strategy being employed on both sides by you know, some good, go good coaching. Trey McDonald is back to kick here for the Duke Blue Devils, their first punt. So both teams forced to punt on their second series after scoring on their first. Here comes the kick. Yeah, it's a good one. Hamilton will field it at the 15 and fumble the football. It's picked up by Clemson, however, three yards deep back at the 10 yard line. Well, I would not want to face Coach Bowden going on that sidelines. 34 yard punt. And coming out with the ball, Clemson recovers. And next Saturday, we'll see these Clemson Tigers again as they move down the road about eight miles to Chapel Hill, Keenan Stadium, and to take on the Tar Heels, who have a battle today with Maryland. You'll see it at high noon on many of these same Jefferson Pilot Sports Stations. Our Sitco ACC Game of the Week. Carolina Blue and Clemson Orange, that'll be a colorful affair. It always is when those two get together. Clemson set up their own 10 yard line first. Oh, what a fake. What a fake. And Whitehurst on his horse. And he runs head on into Brian Green, but not before he makes a nice yardage, about 17 yards. Now, I don't know if he's conscious right now. His brain may be scrambling. But I love this kid's finish. Now, watch him. Oh. Don't think he can't do this now. Now, watch him finish. See, he drops that, he goes into there, he takes that defender on, and I like that. From Duluth, Georgia, redshirt freshman, his father played many years with the Green Bay Packers, David Whitehurst. His coaches are saying, slide, son, slide. <laughs> He'll take that head on right up over the middle, has a supreme, can't hang on. Boy, he had it. Yeah, he had it. Aries Curry might have been into the sun, too, but he had a hand out on that. You can't throw a ball any better than... Whitehurst tossed that time. Boy, he gives you the fake, and it's effortlessly. I mean, this guy's flicking it downfield. Mike Hogwood's going to have to give us an idea of whether or not the sun was a factor on that. If not, then, boy, that's that's a tough loss. Looked like that elbow was awfully close to the waist. You know, that mm -hmm. alligator. Little alligator. Little, had a little gator in him. Yep. Second down and 10. Whitehurst back to throw again, this time complete to McKelvey. He's brought down by three Blue Devils at the 36-yard line. It'll be a gain of about eight on the play. And we've got an injured player down on the field. And that is Micah well, Harris. Micah Harris, yeah. yeah. Sophomore defensive end out of Poland, Ohio. One of the leading tacklers along that front line as well. Goes hard every snap. You can count on the fact that 55 it will be in pursuit of the football. Over there on the Clemson sideline. And uh, let's let's go back to that play by Aries Curry when he missed that pass by uh, Charlie Whitehurst. Mike Hogwood, is the son a factor down there in that play? Steve, I think it is, particularly when receivers are looking back over their left shoulder. The sun really is right in their eyes. When they look over to the right, I think that they can have pretty good vision. But uh, I'm with you guys. Uh, what I'm seeing down on the field, saying over here in the booth, this guy has a gun for an arm. Whitehurst, no, uh, and uh, I hear he's tough. been doing that same thing in practice for the last couple of weeks. Really been on target in practice. Very, very accurate is what the coaches tell me. Well, Mike, you go all the way back to his spring ball and his game, and that the kid has always shown he knows who to throw it to, and he puts it in a position for receivers to catch the ball. Harris comes out. Alexander going in, scores. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. oh, look at that. Oh. Rutgers. <laughs> Dave Sims and company. <laughs> <laughs> Michigan leading Michigan State. On third and short yardage, the pass is complete into the flats. And brought down. Boy, is that Jasmine with the catch? I tell you what, Jasmine went down to show some great hands. And that's the first ball that hasn't been right on the numbers thrown by Charlie Whitehurst. But you know you need some help from your receivers. I just like his throwing action. That one a little low. That's an outstanding Ooh, catch. That is. Tell you what, oh Chad, that's putting those paws down. From Vachery, Louisiana. Oh my goodness. Rambert is flat. And that's Zelensky and Jamie and Small. 
Damien dropped a hammer on that one. <laughs> oh, Loss of three on the play. play. At halftime, we'll be taking a look at our Alltel halftime stats. That loss of yardage in among them brings up second down and about 13. And that's the only member of the senior class in this Duke football team. It's great hope for both of these teams uh, for next year and beyond. Whitehurst to the flats, complete to Hamilton. With a block on the corner, and he gets over midfield into Duke territory. And Jackie Robinson did a good job out on the edge. You know, unselfish receivers blocking, helping their teammates. Pick up of nine on the play. And the ball again right on the money. See, Jack? Yep. That's yes, nice block. Nice block on the edge. All you need is a little bit. You know, Timo George. Third and four. Whitehurst still on his feet now no more. And he'll go down with a sack. Going back to the 47-yard line of Clemson. Jamie and Small led the troops in. Charlie Whitehurst is still trying to make a play going down. I mean, this kid has a real high competitive nature. Now you see, he tried to look up, but that's just too much Duke. The Blue Devils there, boy. They, You know the difference? This season, they dictate the tempo on defense. Yep. yep. I mean, you can tell that, you know, Ted Ro Roof, I used to call him with Tech, is, you know, his Rough Riders. Yep. Those guys really come after you. Win top with a kick and a 37 yarder the first time around. Sharp fumbles this one at the 22. Flag on the play. Could be a payroll problem here. Will be. Yeah. He had a lot of orange shirts. Now, Clemson says they've recovered the football, but that's not going to be the case here, I don't believe. This penalty is probably going to go against Clemson at the 18. Jim Knight to unpile everybody. Bernard Rambert getting up a little bit slow on the play. But I believe we have a uh, violation of that protected halo area around the receiver, Kerry Sharp. Non contact halo violation by the kicking team. 10 yard penalty, first down. It's a great rule. And it's a, an outstanding call in that. It doesn't necessarily have to be contact related. It's just when you get within that particular um, two yard area, you are in violation. Moves the football out to the 29 yard line. Did you catch punts, Steve, back in the day? I mean, I always thought no, that's I the didn't. toughest part of the game. I mean, that's, that's catching punts, man. Punt returners to me are a different type of individual. They're crazy. Quite insane. No question about it. <laughs> Inside handoff, Chris Douglas, and he gets up over the 30-yard line. My most painful memory of my high school football experience was being removed from special teams after missing a block that would have sprung a guy for a touchdown. So it's a sore subject. Here. Oh, well, we'll get back to it. In no, a no. We're pretty much done with that. The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports, not for their high school prowess. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Second down and nine. And the pass complete to the tight end, Powell. Powell uses some blocks to get to midfield. Well, he's, he's impressive. What is it not to like? And this kid has nice, soft hands, gets himself open in the system. This is where your system pays dividends. When you commit to the run and you earn that respect and you got a quarterback that'll settle in and watch the timing on this. See, a little bit of fake, a little short one, just a little second. And then again, nice block down by Sharp. Carry chips in. And the big rumbler, Powell, makes it look easy. 19-yard reception, and it ends the first quarter of play. Each team gets a score in their first series. Duke trying to fashion a drive for the go-ahead score in the second quarter. And we'll be back to Durham right after this. We are back. Welcome back to ACC football from Sitco and Jefferson Pilot Sports. Steve Martin, Doc Walker, Mike Hogwood here in Durham. Beautiful sunny day up around 55, 60 degrees. Adam Smith at the controls of the Duke offense. They're driving after tying this game up at 7 all. Looks like a busted play and Adam Smith will surge ahead about four yards. It'll look like a quarterback draw, but I think uh, they were looking for something a little bit more on that play. Well, you have to give him. A high five for quick reaction. Think on your feet. Make it happen. 
They really like what they see out of Adam Smith. Seven career touchdown passes out of Orindo, California. They had thought they were going to platoon he and Dapolito, but uh, Smith has got most of the snaps and he's been very efficient. Second down and about five. Gain of five on the play. Play action fake, pass complete to Sharp over the middle. And Sharp brought down at the 29 yard line of Clemson. A gain of the play of 17 yards. Well, he's a big playmaker. There's the first quarter stats. Duke with a rushing, and they've held Clemson to only eight. All about equal in the air. That, that, that catches up to you. And look at both quarterbacks have been very efficient. Look at what Whitehurst White is there. smoking. I yeah. mean, you, you can't argue those stats. First and ten at the Clemson 29-yard line. And off Tom uh, Douglas and Douglas searches for yardage to the 25, a gain of about four. Kind of went away from his offensive line on that. Now I don't know if that was by design or that that could be hazardous to your health. I think I'd want to be with Stoney and Lewis, Bear, and those big fellas. No doubt about it. There's that offensive line. Look at that. It's been a long time. Actually, I don't think it's ever happened where Duke's no. had four out of five guys no. with three hundred. My kind of guys. <laughs> See, we can go down and you know do a few cup double cheeseburgers, triple cheeseburger kind of group. Destroy a buffet. Pass oh, yeah. to the we tight kill end. a buffet. You imagine walking into a buffet with that group. <laughs> All you can eat. <laughs> That'll be the last day. That special stays in yeah, put them out of business. That's the first incompleted pass by Adam Smith this afternoon and emphasize Whitehurst has only missed two passes on the day for Clemson. Big Darrell. See these, these are my kind of guys. Yeah. And they're fun guys. I mean guys like that are good and fun to be around. Because all you feed them they're happy. And they know the difference yeah. between a smorgasbord and a buffet. Absolutely. I yeah. don't know what it is but they know. Third down and five. Back to throw Adam Smith. And his pass incomplete for the tight end, Roland, and that's oh, second Lee, and yeah, Oh, John Leak, that's good coverage. Yep, that that is good coverage. And you watch good football players, you know, and they 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 watch the film. They have instincts. They close. They really he never really had possession of the football, and we know Andy Roland can catch it. Good coverage again by John Leak. Brent Garber out here to kick a 41-yard field goal. Garber. Nine out of 12 at 40 plus in his career. And he's hit a 56 yarder this year against East Carolina. This kick is up and it is going to be wide right. Push to the right and Clemson holds. A pair of incompleted passes stops a Duke drive and the Clemson Tigers will take over at their own 25 yard line. It's seven all here at Durham. 13.07 left to go in the first half of play. Duke and Clemson battling it out. ACC football is brought to you in part by GMC. From professional great people come professional great trucks. One of the things that concerns Coach Carl Franks on this team is consistency in the kicking game. He talked about it yesterday. Brent Garber missing that field goal. And after that happened, Coach Franks took the headset off and went down and sat down and had a little chat with his kicker. He said that's one of the things that we really have to get better is kicking consistency. Got to get the ball in the end zone or through the uprights when you get it inside the other team's 30-yard line. And Duke failed to do that that time after moving the ball from their own 29 yard line and right now here comes Clemson first and 10 at their own 24. Charlie Whitehurst 10 out of 12 coming into this drive and off goes to Yosef Kelly. And Yosef Kelly gets some pretty good yardage up over the 30 to the 32. It's a pickup of about eight on the play. Strong strong run. You know Kelly's six foot two hundred and twenty five pounder and he showed you real strong lower body strength. He got a little bit in the pile and moved the pile average four point one yards per crack. He's out of Walterboro South Carolina. He's their leading ground gainer. He'll get the call again but this time not much there. Sean Johnson leads the charge with Ryan Fowler. Gain of about a yard on the play. You no, know, Ryan Fowler again. We talk about John Leak. You see Fowler feel, you know, he didn't overrun the hole. 
kind of glided right in, kept those shoulders square, and attacked on contact. Third down and two for Clemson, tied with Duke at seven all. Play action, blitz is on. Whitehurst alerts one, now another. Now I'll have to ditch three. Pass incomplete. Big throw. I mean, Great that throw. is a big time throw. He did not accept a loss. We have seen this, Steve, over the years, how many guys have thrown their team into the, a disastrous yep. position. Yep. You know, because they didn't have the gun enough to get it out of bounds. Aguano and Johnson were chasing him. It brings up a fourth down, but at least from the 32 and not from way back inside his own 10. So Whitehurst makes do with what he had. He didn't have much protection that time around. Great blitz. Yep. Great blitz by Duke. Sharp back to return. Win cop. Three downs and out this time around. Gets a good kick away. Sharp at his 27. And goes down five yards later at the 32. It's a 40 yard punt. So Clemson forced to punt after three plays and football fans registered to win a million dollars. That's right, a million dollars in the I'm Bell South million dollar kick contest. Visit jpsports.com to register and check out the schedule for the Bell South E-Zone. Rolling into college campuses around the South. Sign up, then start practicing your field goals. Grand prize winner gets a chance to kick for a million dollars in the 2002 Chick-fil-A Bowl Peach Bowl on New Year's Eve. You now have my full attention. <laughs> a million got a it. A million it? did it. Yeah. Back to throw, Adam Smith. A dart to Landrum at the 35. And Landrum, nice extra yards after Jerry the reception Landrum. to the 41. It's a gain of nine. That is priceless for a receiver to take it beyond the Four reception area. You Justin catch the Miller. ball, now what do you give me afterwards? And that time Landrum Database. showed you some Second real down. skill. Two. You think, well, it's not much. It's two or three yards. You know, a field goal could be one yard short. You know, you could be inches away from a first down. It all matters. I have seen Landrum carry the ball today. He's uh, got a 10-yard average on the ground. That's his 14th pass reception of the year. Second down and two. Smith with the option, and he chooses his option out to the 44-yard line. Brought down by Nick Eason, but it's a Duke first down. Good for a blue devil. First down. The way you know, both units on defense are playing pretty good, pretty aggressive. But it's the offense that gets, comes through with that big play. And I go back to that one, uh, maybe you know, with the sun possibly gotten away on uh, Charlie Whitehurst. He had a big throw downfield. And when you, it's hard to get a guy that open. And when you get him that open, you don't connect. Well, no. you usually pay for it. Hit the receiver right on the hands. Aries Curry on that play. First and ten. Here's Alex Wade. Uh, got hit right at the line of scrimmage and then bowled the to the 47-yard line. End of about two on the play. Tackled by Rodney Thomas, the senior out of Caldwell, Jack Cadwell, Georgia, actually. 95 tackles on the season. He and John Leak have just about soaked up all the tackles you can get. There's Wade. You know what that means. That they have strong defensive line play. Right. You know, those people swallowing up offensive linemen, they have pretty good gap control and it allows those guys to scrape. You know, and 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 get get tackles. Very few defensive linemen lead you in tackles, but they, they do other things. Here's Smith throw to the flats, and it's underthrown, and goes out of bounds. Sharp wisely thought to pursue that ball as it was behind the line of scrimmage. But you'll see a number of teams that their safeties will be leading the team in tackles. Not that's not good. good. No. Not good. No. And, and that's what happens. So well, that's why Clemson's so highly rated defensively, and especially against the pass. Yeah. John Levin's first season, you know, over from Auburn, coming in, it's hard to, you know, to get people to react to your teachings, uh, you know, that quickly. So they've done an outstanding job. Their offense has just put them in bad situations with turnovers. 50% completion rate today on third down for Duke. They're facing third and eight here and a blitz. Smith throws out of it and his receiver dropped the football. Lance Johnson dropped the football. Would have been good for the first down, but we have a flag down on the field. Yeah, I think the Tigers jump. They tried to time that blitz just right, and I think he missed it. Even so, Smith got the ball away. Oh, yeah. In the pocket. Yeah, nice. That ball should have been caught. Yep, you're right, Doc. Mm -hmm. So third and eight is going to become third and three. Offside. 
defense five yards, repeat the down. Jim Knight with the call. So that pushes the ball from the 46 into Clemson territory at the 49. And makes an interesting call for Adam Smith. Well, you want to catch because you had the first down. Yeah. And the ball was right on the, on the money. But now you're looking at third and three. Johnson split wide to the left side. Three wide receivers. Clark, Landrum, and Sharp to the top side. Yeah, there you go. Quarterback draw. It's going to be Smith. He needed the 45, and I think a second effort may have gotten it for him. Mm -hmm. That's the only way he'll get it. I like the call. Spread him out. You know, and, and, and get him out of that box. And then let your quarterback, you know, secure it. And that's the second first down that the quarterback has earned for them this drive. And you watch, you want just a little bit of drop back. You want those guys rushing the field. Nice block by Alex Wade. I mean, the little things make an offense go. First and ten. Three wide receivers, wide side of the field. Inside handoff, Alex Wade, and he jumps ahead for about four yards to the 41 yard line. Well, if Alex stumbled through that, it was tripped up. But, buddy, he has some, he has room. Yeah, he did. And that, that would have been a big time run had he been able to maintain his balance. It's gain of five now. Actually, four makes it second down and six. Steve, you get big runs in an offense where you can spread people out with your wide receivers. You can go four wide, spread people out. You can pop some things. This is the third straight possession or third straight play that we've seen this formation out of Duke with the three. Wide receivers and a V to the top side. Blitz coming. Yep. Pass complete. Johnson, he slipped. But he got the first down. It's going to be very close to it. Brought down by Leak and Fountain. What I like about it, again, they, they go trips three receivers top side. They come down and work the short end. And, you know, he may have audibleized into that. But making that decision, ball on the money, and you, that's stealing. If all you need is four or five, you know, you can get it every time. Another first down. Duke now pushing the ball into Clemson territory again. And now Duke has some of that Tiger pass protection we talked about earlier for, for Clemson. Now Duke uh, and uh, Smith has been untouched. Third excursion into Clemson territory this afternoon. Smith steps up, has time, pass to the flat. Oh, what a grab by Johnson. A tackle by Brian Mance. It doesn't go very far, but boy, it was spectacular. A four-yard grab, and Mike Hogwood has more on injuries in the sideline. Well, Micah Harris, who you guys talked about going down with the uh, injury, has an injured right knee. They don't think it's too serious. They put a pretty stiff brace on it, and he is going to play probably be back out there when Duke's on defense. Starter on the defensive front line. 55 tackles is uniform number coming in. That hockey mentality. How about Mario Lemieux earlier in the week? Ooh. With 32 stitches and went back on the ice and got the game-winning goal against oh. the Capitals. Oh, that's a man. That is a that's man. That's a man. Second and six. We're glad he unretired. Wade tries to push the pile, but Clemson is there to push back. Bryant McNeil, among others, there to stop him for no gain. Well, just think about the last time you had three or four stitches anywhere. Oh, yeah. Did you go back to what you were doing? Are you kidding me? I didn't work for a No week. way. <laughs> <laughs> Guy had 32 right on his grill. No, no, no. Third and five. Third, third down conversion this drive for Duke. They've gotten them all. They'll nice, get this one. Nice. Complete Lance Johnson coming right down from the hash mark at the 20-yard line. That's a tough throw. Yeah. Nine-yard catch, and it's his fifth of the day. They made it look easy, but that's not easy to do. You got a guy running at you coming right down the line, and he put that on the money. Boy, that's a great operation there, folks. That's nice. Nine yard hookup gets him in the red zone again. Hitting a running target coming right across you. That's like duck shoot. He might have looking in there. Might have been looking into some sun there too. First and ten. Smith out of the shotgun. Alex Wade this time. Bigger hole for Alex and he'll carry some people to the 15 yard line. Leak Thomas and Vaughn are along for the ride but Wade gets the five yard gain elsewhere in the SEC Auburn Ole Miss going at it today and Miami has pulled back in front of Rutgers 8 7 the game in Piscataway this afternoon who's pitching in that game <laughs> how about this one Iowa ties it up with a field goal on Wisconsin in the second another Big Ten verdict Michigan 
over Michigan boy, State. Spartans. What happened to the Spartans? Oh boy. Second down and five. Back to throw. Smith over the middle has a man complete. Touchdown, Santario Landrum. Wow. And Duke is rolling there. Oh boy. 15 yard hook up for touchdown and Duke steps out on front by six. Yeah. Coach Franks has got to be pleased with that. Boy these quarterbacks have been dead on this afternoon. We, we, we got we got a shootout here. We got a shootout here at Wallace Wade. I'll tell you Smith hit five of those six passes that he threw on the drive. Here's Garber's kick for point after it is good. It's a good hold. That was a very nice hold. Could have been lost in that one. On a tough snap, Adam Smith getting it done. His eighth touchdown pass of the year. He's happy with the outcome. 14-7 Duke back after these messages from your local ACC station. Adam Smith wants to know how Santario Landrum was wide open. We'll see it from the low angle here. Now watch the big guys in the middle. Boy, that's a nice piece of pass blocking there. And the big fella who swallowed up the screen, Daryl Lewis, 330 pounder, he made it happen. The rest was just pitch and catch. Brent Garber getting ready to kick it off. Justin Miller has returned the two previous kickoffs. We haven't seen Derek Hamilton yet, and this is going to be a low kick that'll be fielded and taken out of Hamilton's hands there by number 36. Oh, he back Darryl, to that. that could be a football. Picked up by Duke. Oh, Duke is just getting downright nasty. That's Malcolm Ruff, a true freshman. Picks up the loose ball, punts and pops it up. Well, this just didn't work out well for the Tigers. That ball looks exposed. Now, that's the piece, and that's, that's smart. He saw that all the way, almost. ripped it out, and it almost had the recovery. Brian Green stripped the ball. Yeah, that's thinking, man. Yeah. That is thinking. And Malcolm Ruff picks it up, and Duke's offense. Go out and control your own destiny. They're at the Clemson 29 yard line. 618 left in this second quarter. Duke with an excellent opportunity to pile on here. Blitz is on. Smith hit and intercepted by Khalid Vaughn. Boy, that's getting it back. And that was a pitiful piece of pass blocking by Chris Douglas, number four. I mean, he did not have a manly effort on that pass protection. He just got run right over by Bryant McNeil. Yeah, ran run right over. And that's as a result. Now, that's a, you talk about a golden opportunity. Hey, you watch it. We got a low angle on this one. You won't be able to see it on the side. You will see the interception, though. That's great camera work. But what we didn't get a chance to see was Chris Douglas who was just eaten alive by McNeil. So Clemson gets it back. Pass to the flats, complete to McKelvey. And McKelvey knocked out of bounds at the 42-yard line. Oh, look at Tom, Tommy Bowden. He's looking on. He said, well, okay. <laughs> That's right from, well, from where we would have started had we hadn't had that fumble by Cliff Harrell. Offense, you delayed one play, get out there. Yeah, but when you have Clemson skilled people, man, you do you can't allow them to you put it back on the field on a fluke. No. Second down and about one. Hand off to Kelly. He needs oh to get over the goodness. 40. He got there. Sean Johnson with the tackle, though. He didn't get much more. Well, that's small, man. He's 220, 225 pounds, but he he attacks me. I mean, this kid shows you he just explodes through ball carriers. From Pontiac, Michigan. Senior, as we said, lone senior on the team. Out of the shotgun, Whitehurst, pass complete. McKelvey on the corner and driven out of bounds by Stanford at the 48 yard line. It's going to be a gain of seven, and that's the fifth catch by J.J. McKelvey this afternoon. Yeah, Kenneth Stanford gave him a lot of room, maybe a little bit too much room. I mean, these Clemson receivers, man, they are so athletic that if you give them some space, I mean, they're going to wiggle and get by you. And they are big. 6 3 apiece out there. Back to throw with four wide outs. Whitehurst pass and not caught by Hamilton. Fowler covering on the play. Would have been a tough cover, so there's a miss. That's running, that's running through the football. Look at those. Look at the. <laughs> this is Duke's problem today. Average height, and that's being liberal at 5'11. 6'3 average receiver height for Clemson. 
And they have four receivers at 6-4. Youngblood's one of them. Hamilton another. They have five wide outs for Whitehurst on third and short. Blitz is on. They're bringing six. Pass is complete to Youngblood for the first down. In Duke territory at the 47-yard line. <laughs> I like that. Good formation. You realize that you will be blitzed. It's one-on-one. -on -one. Make the throw and catch. Five wide outs, so that's, there's no protection there. Whitehurst let it go. First and ten. Three wide outs this time out on the no huddle. Yosef Kelly gets the handoff. Kelly pushes the pile ahead. And he surges down to the 40 yard line. And now it looks like Clemson has developed some momentum offensively here. Well, they got a, a, their breath of uh, fresh air. They're relieved. <laughs> Mills turnovers start to mount on you, then you lose confidence. Now they have that confidence back. Nice drive blocking up front. And again, you got to be impressed with this kid's lower body strength. Six yard gain on the play. It's up second down. It's actually seven. Second and three. Whitehurst to throw with a blitz and the pass incomplete. Intended for McKelvey, but lots of pressure by Duke that time. Yeah, see, the pressure, the influence of the pressure got to him. And that time they influenced a bad throw. They almost timed it. I thought they were, might have been called off, but they got back in time. That's good pressure and then right up the gut. That's Dewan. Yeah, Dewan. Yep. He's a player. At Dewan, you know, we're about fifth, sixth time we mentioned his name. He moved himself into the starting lineup after breaking his ankle. Third down now and three for Clemson at the Duke 40 yard line. So Dewan just took a job. 14-7, <laughs> Duke in the lead. Uh -oh. Rush is on. Whitehurst to throw from a Calvin incomplete. Jamie and Small down Whitehurst just as he threw the football. Boy, Ted Roof is calling this game now to a team. I mean, that's what it's all about. Big Ted is calling this deal now. He's getting guys coming in from different sides. We're up the middle, on the side. I mean, and that's the only thing that has Whitehurst off. One quarter ago, Charlie was putting darts right on the number. He yeah. was untouched, yeah. unscathed. Yeah. Now he's under some pressure. Fourth down, Clemson going for it. They're in that never, never land here, the 40 yard line. Hunt probably goes into the end zone. Take a shot and see what happens. Whitehurst out of the pocket. Whitehurst. Zelensky can't get him. He's a player. And did he get the first down? No, they say he stepped out of bounds at the 40 yard line. And that is three yards shy of a first down. No gain on the play. Yeah, he may be short, but I'll take him. He can play for me because that kid's competitive. And he came up short. It's a great job on Duke's part to stop it. But I'll tell you what, you saw him turn that corner, buddy. He had intent. I mean, he's competitive. And you know, you go for it. You mentioned it. You're in Never Never Land. Yeah. But it's the idea that Coach West believed in this guy. This kid here, he's something. I like his style. Charlie Whitehurst, redshirt freshman from Duluth, Georgia. Alex Wade comes into the offensive huddle now for the Duke Blue Devils, who lead this game 14 to 7. Trying to break a three game losing streak to Clemson and a four game overall on their season. First and ten, the handoff to Wade. And Wade steps outside the block of his center, Luke Bear, to the left and finds a little bit of running room out to the 44-yard line. Stay tuned. Coming up at halftime, we'll be highlighting the best in the ACC presented by Don Pablo. Love the spots. I get hungrier. <laughs> That's what the spot's all a good spot. That's right. Makes you hungry. Yep. Makes you call out for more. A fajita in a movie. Second down six. Wade gets the call again. Big hole. First down in the Clemson territory at the 46-yard line. Sampson and Meekins make the stop, but not before Alex Wade, mom looking on, gets the 10-yard gain. Big Drew Stroner, you're going to watch him here. Watch him go down the line and pull. See, he gets that pull. That's the kickout block. That's the crusher. Little pancake action there working, folks. And, of course, Alex Wade, just strong, tough inside runner. That's nice block by Drew. Eight of the last 13 plays have been running plays for the Duke Blue Devils. And three of them are by Adam Smith, and Smith is close to another first down. Quarterback is carried three times, twice for first down, that time for nine yards to the Clemson 36-yard line. Even Alex Wade's mom liked to play. See, Linda Wilson. 
<laughs> there's a there's a great fan. She's into it. Yes, she and is. That's the beauty of this, man. That's right. Beauty of this game, college football. Not a thing better. They're all your son. Second down and inches. Tight end rolling in motion. Hand off Wade. And Wade will not have enough. Unless they give him forward progress. Oh, Rodney here. Thomas. He said, I'll end this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll sit mom down a while. Yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll show her how to not like this game. Yeah. <laughs> You think about your mom when your mom's at the game, even if you have your fumble, she'll still hold that sign up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Fans yeah. won't do that. They'll drop that sign. But your mom, she'll still hold it. See what the measurement is going to be. They're going to bring the chains out here. Adam Smith's had pretty good first half. It, it is a, it's a good half. It's a good execution on both sides of the ball. Highly competitive ball game. Right. See, Duke's going to be short. By the length of a football and a little bit more. Well, this is their version of Never Never Land. Yeah. yeah they're down there in the 35. No sense to punt here. Alex Wade, and you have Big Daryl Lewis and Rusty Wilson, Luke Bear. I mean, you go for this thing. Yeah. I mean, you say, boys, we're going to hitch the wagon up and we're going to get some chow. And you got the, uh, you got. Tommy Bowden and company guessing a little bit because mm -hmm. your, your quarterback is, is, a, is a threat to run and um, well, they all the other factors that you mentioned yeah. because you can rush it but you know as a player you but players will tell you every let's go they always want to go yeah but they don't have to move if it doesn't work <laughs> 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 scholarship still intact it's like us unpublished you're number. always saying go for it third and inches Tight end in motion. Oh, they got it. Yeah. Got the call, too. Yep, they got, got the call. Both ends flag on the play, but it's going to be it's going to be an offsides call against Clemson, so you can move the sticks, and this will be accepted by Duke. That'll push it down five yards. Defense, five yards, first pass. Jim Knight with the call. There is no substitute in this game. For an offensive line that can run the ball and pass block. I mean, this Duke line is something special. Look what these guys have done. Whitehurst, 13 of 19, but Smith, 11 of 15. He's had one picked off. Here comes a handoff to Wade, jumps into the hole to the right side, and surges ahead to the 26 yard line. Gain on the play of close to four as he stretches it out. You know, that's a misleading statistic. And the interceptions, I've always felt that there should be an asterisk for quarterbacks. If the ball's tipped. Yeah. You know, it's not a, it's not your interception. It's not a negligent. It's a tip. Quarterback accepts way too much. His sack yardage comes off the rushing offensive yeah, stats. That's ridiculous. That's just, you know, way too much blame for one person. <laughs> Second down and six. <laughs> Smith over the middle, pass complete. It's Wade, he's close to the first down, might be just shy of it, needed the 20. Coming up with the tackle, Brandon Jamison, the junior from Hopkins, South Carolina. Rodney Thomas came in late just to make sure. The Clemson linebackers year in and year out. It's like they just print, they cut them out of a mold. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're fast, aggressive, ornery, you know, and they attack the football. You look at the top 50 players of all time, and you've got to... Uh, Michael Dean Perry and Anthony Simmons. When I see 41, role. you know, I can't help but think of Simmons. You think yeah. Simmons, uh, I don't know if anybody's been better than he was. Oh, doing they're, it. they're even closer on this third down. It'll actually be third down and in inches again. See, and I like it when you, no discussion. You just pop in the huddle, go run the play, get it, and keep going. Yeah. The more you deliberate over it and think about it, the more the defense feels, well, maybe they don't feel like they can get this thing. So third and inches again here for Duke. In the NFL, Bill Parcells, I thought, was the best at it. You know, he didn't mess around with sure you They just went for it. Yeah. You know, no timeouts, no nothing. He had, trust you guys, let's go knock somebody's butt off the ball and get the first down. Minute and a half left to go in this first half. Duke very good on third down this afternoon. Of course, part of that has been they've been third and short. This is third and inches. And Smith will get it, surging over the pile. Thomas tries to drive him back, but... Move the change once more. Duke's in the red zone again. They're too physical right in that triangle. That center and two guards. There's just too many cheeseburgers between those three to not get a yard. <laughs> I mean, that's the bottom line. <laughs> not enough cheese. Huh? I don't know, man. Those guys, milkshakes, cheeseburgers, 
you know, some steak. Can you see those guys on one of those prime rib, all you can eat prime rib? <laughs> see, that's that's what you get, man, with an offensive line. Duke has had eight plays, seven of them rushing plays. Big Daryl might be sneaking out at night, stopping by, picking up little churches and Popeyes as well. <laughs> Hand off now goes to Wade, and there's not much running there. Roderick, uh, Rodney Thomas in on the ta tackle. Good linebacker. Yep. In of about two. You have to be so quick, Steve, to shoot under. He went underneath that. And Duke has to call timeout to stop the clock with 36 seconds left to go in the half. Talking things over, looking at second and nine in Clemson's red zone. We'll be back to Wallace Wade Stadium right after this. About 36 seconds left to go here in this first half. Duke wants six. They don't want to try a field goal. They missed their last attempt down here, 41 yards. They're at the Clemson 18-yard line. They have two timeouts remaining. They're up 14 to 7 and they want to add to that score and feel real good about themselves going into the locker room. Three wide outs to the top quarterback oh, draw ball. Smith. But he needed nine. He gets five of that to the 15 and Duke has to call timeout again. You don't realize the speed on Clemson sideline as Smith kind of limping until it looked for a moment like this was a jailbreak. Like they had it open. See, there's the void. He looks like he has it. And then all of a sudden, there he is again, the human eraser at Rodney Thomas. He comes from all from all over the place. And he stopped the play. And Smith limps to the sideline here somewhat. Up to the 15 yard line. And uh, interesting call now. 31 seconds left to go. This is the 11th play of the drive. The 10 previous, ten, or nine of the 10 previous, have been run. Right. Well, Kerry Sharp. Is a guy that usually in this circumstances comes to comes up large. Five scores. Here's a guy in the red area that can make, make you miss in short space. He's a guy that I would look to. Well, they've got to try to loosen things up. Third down and five. A lot of field to work with down here in the red zone. Carl Franks talking things over with his quarterback, Adam Smith. You know, Alex Wade has really stepped up a lot in this particular drive and not so much a Chris Douglas, you know, and these guys will have a gadget play for you now. Well, they've already run one for a touchdown. Yep. Mike Hogwood will have all the halftime stats. We'll have highlights for you, and he'll have a word from around the league, scores of other games from around the country. Join him here at halftime at Wallace Wade Stadium. Right now, third down, five, most important play of this game so far. Uh oh, uh oh, everybody up in tight. Fumble fake and the pitch to the corner. Landrum and Landrum oh, stretches ahead. But they're going to mark him down at the 11 yard line. And again, Duke's tendency to want to stay on the ground is interesting here. It gets them close to a first down and it brings up fourth down. Well, you know, they are playing to their strength, that offensive line. And you chew up some clock and you keep Clemson's skill people on the sideline. It's fourth. So it's not a bad play. Fourth and a yard. And now Carl Franks calls timeout. He'll call his final timeout with 14 seconds left to go. He's got Brent Garber at his side and Chris Dapolito. But Garber's got the helmet on. And now Franks wants to talk things over and see if his team can get a yard. Yeah, well, he's got to check and see can his quarterback run the option. Yeah. Should he want to do that? I mean, right now, I think it's more of a health of Adam Smith. But I sure like to see if you're a Duke fan, you want to see him get sharp one shot at the end zone. Problem is, if you run the football here, you run the risk of losing most of the 14 seconds that yeah. remain on this clock, and you have no way to stop it. Yeah, that's uh, that's tough. Now, our clock, our clock is about eight seconds. Oh boy, they moved the clock down, didn't yeah, they? Clock down to eight seconds. Right? Eight seconds. So well, we'll see these Clemson Tigers move down to Chapel Hill a week from today at high noon at Keaton Stadium, and as Sitco presents ACC football, always a great rivalry when the Tar Heels and the Tigers mix it up, and you'll see it on many of these same Jefferson Pilot Sports stations. Field goal unit is on the field now for Duke. Fourth down. They look. They took six more seconds off the clock and wound it down to eight seconds. That changes it considerably because a play here and you deprive yourself of any points. This will be a 28-yard kick for Brent Garber, and he's doing it from the uh, the right hash mark. The wind, if any, might be at his back. He's been plagued by some low kicks on point after and this is in the same general area of the field albeit not at the middle low snap 
There's the kick. It's up and it is good. So the Duke Blue Devils end the half on a score. It's a field goal of 28 yards. It caps a march from their own 40 yard line primarily on the ground. And Duke takes a 10 point lead into the locker room here at halftime 17 to 7. And Brent Garber makes up for a 41 yard field goal missed just a few moments ago and picks up the 28 yarder to finish the first half. And standing by with Carl Franks is our Mike Hogwood. Well, Carl, you can't be too disappointed in your offense. Pretty good production there in the first half. Well, I'm disappointed in the one chance we had to score after we got the fumble and the kickoff. We, we turned the guy loose on our quarterback. Had a guy, block, had a guy block him. We turned him loose. Hit Adam, gave him the ball right back when, you know, you were hoping we're going to go down there and make it 21-7, but instead it's 17-7. So, you know, I'm, I'm pleased with the way we took care of the ball. Pleased with the way that we mixed up the run the pass on them. They're blitzing us quite a bit, so Adam's done a great job of checking. Yeah, you really seem to be running the ball with some success and really running it off in the first half. Oh, yeah, we, we've got to run the ball to, to be effective. We need to run it to take some of the pressure off the quarterback. And our defense has played well. They come up with some key uh, third down plays to stop Clemson. Finally, what are you going to tell this team in the locker room right now up 10? I'm going to tell them that's the way that we need to continue to play football. That's what we've talked about all week. We need to come out here like every coach is going to tell them. Nothing, nothing. Let's go back. We've won one half. Let's get fired up to win a second one. All right, headed to the locker room. That's Carl Franks, his Duke Blue Devils on top here in Durham, 17-7. to We are at halftime. Back with our halftime activities in just a moment. ACC football is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts, where the best part is our people. By Geico Direct, the sensible alternative. By Red Roof Ends. Red says live large, pay little. Red knows the road, Red Roof Ends. And by your neighborhood Sitco. Proud to support today's athletes. Sitco, we know you. ACC football is brought to you by Alltel. Are you connected? By Don Pablo's, the real enchilada. By BB&T, branch banking and trust company. By your neighborhood Sitco, proud to support today's athletes. Sitco, we know you. And by Cooper Tires. Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. And there's the bust of Wallace Wade gracing Wallace Wade Stadium. You see the roses there. They're a gift of the Pasadena Rose Bowl Committee. The Rose Bowl visited here in 1942. And right now, we're getting ready for our second half of action, our Sitco ACC Game of the Week. The Duke Blue Devils leading the Clemson Tigers 17-7. And our Mike Hogwood visited a moment ago with Clemson coach Tommy Bowden. Thank you, Steve. Coach, what did you tell the guys in the locker room? Well, we got to come out and play a little more fire. You know, we're making some mistakes on offense, same thing on defense. And Duke's playing very good right now, not taking any way away from them. But we played kind of uninspired. we got to come out here and we got to make plays on offense. And your young quarterback looks pretty good. He, he has looked real good. It's not uh, – we just got to hit some guys when we're open or blitzness, but we got to protect and just make plays. All right. That's Tommy Bowden, Steve. Well, he talked about being blitzed, and that's what Ted Roof started to show him as far as the defensive package in the second quarter. Yeah, he really did. You, you try to figure it out. Now, Ted will have to come up with a few new wrinkles because Tommy and them, they'll counter it. But don't forget the bomb that got away from Clemson. I exactly. think you're going to see a little bit more. They're going to attack the deep third with a little bit more aggressiveness. And as Tommy mentioned, who, who wants it? That's what his thing's going to go down Yep. Stephen Furr getting set to kick the ball away for Clemson. Ronnie Elliott and Santenio Santerio Landrum are deep for the Duke Blue Devils who lead this game 17-7 and will have the ball preventing a fumble on this kickoff. This is Elliott at the 10. Elliott gets settled and gets out over the 25-yard line to the 27-yard line. It's a 9-yard, 19-yard return. Let's take a look at first half possession for the Duke Blue Devils. First drive, touchdown. They gave it up in six plays the next drive. Missed a field goal on a push deep. Then scored the touchdown on the uh, little end-around pass. The interception hurt because it happened deep in Clemson territory. And following a turnover. Yep. Douglas leading rusher, 52. Powell, the tight end, has three catches for 45, and Smith has had a very efficient day at quarterback. Knees under center again at 
his own 26 yard line first and 10 Chris Douglas behind him in the eye here comes a fake end around and this is Douglas and Douglas just gets grasped there by Eric Sampson the left outside linebacker but they showed you a couple things on that play doc that we might see them go to later on other options that they might have developed well that's the one thing about Carl Franks and his offense it is designed to keep you off balance and really you, you just won you, you can break that tackle that's a, that's a big play but that's Eric Sampson sure tackle might see them go to the end around next time around they showed Landrum on the motion Pass to the flats, complete out there to carry Sharp, but beautiful tackle in open territory. Alfred yes. Baudrick, graduate student. There are eight graduate students on this Clemson lineup from Cameron, South Carolina. Yeah, Baudrick shows you here's the way you defend it. You know, these little gadgets work if you make people miss. Not the case there. That's tackle with attitude. Loss of two on the completion that time. Bring up third down and about eight. I just love the emotion. That's what Coach Bowden's talking about. The Tigers have got to get into this thing mentally. Smith has some time, and he's got a man out there. That's Sharp complete at the 47-yard line. It's a 20-yard hookup for the first down. And, and no need to be frustrated on this in coverage because there's nothing you can do about it. A timing route is impossible to stop. This ball is in the air. He's still in the stem of his route. Terry Sharp was still in the vertical part of this route. That ball was on the on the money and there's John Love it yeah defensive coordinator looking for something that'll stop this Duke machine their own time of possession here draw play Douglas and Douglas gets out of a tackle and pushes ahead and got about three more yards than he probably should have making the tackle Eric Coleman sophomore wow. from Naples Florida big rusty Wilson the right guard for Duke I mean it's like sumo wrestlers in the middle of that pile <laughs> Those big guys, and Clemson is up for the challenge now. Don't get me wrong. Nick Easton, Washington, McNeil, Vaughn, those guys, they are banging. Second down and six. Inside handoff, Douglas gets away from an arm tackle, but then some help coming from John Leak. He gets into Clemson territory and pushes the ball down to about the 47-yard line. Gain of about two on the play and brings up the key third down here for the Duke Blue Devils, who's been very good on third down conversions today. This is what Clemson needs. Clemson needs one of those guys in the front seven, preferably the front four, to win an individual battle. And right now, collectively, the Duke offensive line, you know, has been stingy. Trips to the wide side of the field. Four wide receivers total. Smith on third and four pass is complete to Chris Douglas he's got the first down a shoestring tackle by John Leak prevented any more yardage down to the 40 yard line it's a pick up a seven and it moves the chains for Duke Boy, oh, Duke is just dangerously close to breaking a big play you mentioned that John Leak then saved one but you know we've watched Alex Wade stumble a little bit that time Douglas stumbles as we watch the replay good pass protection they run a little X stunt in between doesn't phase him and that bit of tackling there saved the Tigers a big, big play. Smith now will check off the line of scrimmage. Three wide receivers out, one back in, blitzes on, passes incomplete for Landrum. Landrum had to look up into that sun that time. That was also a good delayed blitz this time by Don Lovett's group of Tigers. It's going to come from the right side. And it's just difficult to deal with. That time, strong rush by Nick Eason. See, that's the one on one battle we talked about. Somebody up front has got to win the individual battle. And that time, Clemson won it. Duke has won a lot of those battles in the first half. Second down and 10 after the incompleted pass. Stops a string of four straight completions. Handoff now to Douglas. And he's not got much running room there. And again, Nick Eason flattens him along with Brian McNeil. Yeah, McNeil plays as well. Now, the defensive line is doing exactly what I talked about. They're starting to now reverse the whippings. Now, they're starting to pass it out now. And that's just strong that McNeil doesn't give up any room whatsoever. He manhandles Roland on that play. Watch him here, bottom of your screen right there. He's going to come in, doesn't give up an inch, and gets his pads on the play. Ninth play of the drive. Third down and eight. Smith the throw has a man open that sharp, but there's a step behind on the throw. 
Covering on the play, Brian Mance, but Sharp had a step on the defender. The ball had two steps on both. Here's the playmaker, Gary Sharp. It's just a matter of time before they pull the, you know, pull the plug with him. That was it, but they missed it. Now both teams have missed an open receiver for a score. Duke has Matt Brooks back and getting ready to kick. This could be a drop kick here or a punt. Normally a place kicker. Their regular punter is Trey McDonald. He's going to get a pooch kick off. That's what they want. And it's a good one. Fair catch call for by Mance into a tough son at the 12 yard line. 26 yard punt, no return. Good call by Carl Franks to pen Clemson deep in their own territory after their first possession of the second half. Last time the Duke Blue Devils won an ACC game was right here in 1999 against Wake Forest. Scotty Montgomery returned the opening kickoff for one of his four touchdowns on that particular day. Montgomery, a Cherryville, North Carolina native. Duke defense recorded five sacks and three interceptions as the Blue Devils defeated the Deacons 48-35. That's 22 ACC games ago. Right now, Duke with a 10-point lead. And Clemson with a football first and 10 from their own 12-yard line. The pass out to Youngblood at the 18-yard line. We talked about Scotty Montgomery, and he's standing by with our Mike Hogwood. Yes, yeah, I got to ask you, do you remember that play we just saw, the uh, kickoff return? Yes, I do. It was, uh, it was a great day for me because it was uh, senior day, and I had my family here. And they got to see me open up the game with a 99-yarder. All right, we'll watch this play. Uh, Steve will come back here. Second down and three. Charlie Whitehurst, three wide receivers out, goes to the flats to Hamilton, his playmaker. And Hamilton stumbles, gathers his feet, and pushes ahead for some nice yardage down to the 28-yard line. It'll be a gain of nine. Back to you, Mike. Scotty, what about this Duke team today, and uh, what is your impression of the Duke program now under Carl Franks? You know, I think they're making strides. The biggest thing is you got to get good football players in here, and I think he's trying to recruit guys. They're playing real hard today. I think the defense is doing a good job. Biggest thing I think about this team, though, is if they keep fighting the whole game, they can, you know, they can make plays and, and win the game. But you can't win. You can't win games if you don't make plays, and that's one thing they have to do. Charlie Whitehurst just made a play with a completion for the Clemson Tigers, and I'll also uh, ask you about uh, this Duke team and your experience here. Now you're on with the Denver Broncos. How are things in the NFL? Oh, the NFL is wonderful. I, I tell you, it's everything that I ever expected. It. You know, I came from a team here at Duke. To be honest with you, we didn't have a you know too good of a, any seasons while I was here. Now, in the NFL team, where all we do is win football games, so I feel real good about it. All right, another completion by uh, Charlie Whitehurst. Back upstairs to Stephen Dock. It's a fourth straight completion, in fact. And it pushes the ball out to the 45-yard line. That one of four yards. He started this series out going to Youngblood to seven. They came back with pass completions of nine, 12, and four yards. This is Clemson's first half possessions. They scored in their first time with the ball, three punts, and then gave up on downs after they pushed the ball past midfield. Looking at second and six. Clemson down by 10, rushes on. Johnson gets Whitehurst, and Whitehurst hangs on to the football miraculously. Back at the 41 yard line, a loss of four. That's just great coverage. That's a classic coverage sack. And, and, and one I'm sure that Coach Bob would like him to see him just get rid of the football. You know, he's got to think, you know what? The way Duke has been rushing the quarterback, that it's just a matter of time. So get rid of it, don't take the sack. Second sack of the day taken by the Clemson Tigers looking at third down and 11 down by 10 points three man rush pass up there complete beautiful ball thrown by Whitehurst complete to Jackie Robinson into Duke territory at the 37 yard line a 21 yard hookup on third and 11. Well, he stuck that on his chest like he had Velcro <laughs> between the eight and the two and, and Jackie deserves this because he had a heck of a block. A couple plays ago, he's been working on both ends of the offense, and you watch him there. Ball right in the money, took a nice lick, kept on Jan. First down pass, just like the pass that started this series, goes to Youngblood for about three. And Stanford, or with the catch, with the tackle, that is the sixth reception by Kevin Youngblood, including one for a touchdown. Second and seven on the play. Clemson has gone to the air here. 
the sixth play or eighth play of the drive in their first running play and Rambert is in an open territory. Rambert rumbles down to the 10 yard line. Rambert on the carry. Brian Green makes the saving tackle. It's a 25 yard gain and the best running play of the day for the Clemson Tigers. Boy, oh, and it just gives you an opportunity to really open up uh, your offensive uh, repertoire now because you pick, you get a big run, it demoralizes the defense. Now watch how play action starts to work his way in for the Tigers. Let's see if the Tigers can get a first down. I don't believe they can. They've got to put it in the end zone here. First and goal from the nine and oh, a half. Sucker. Oh, pass. Deflected by Sean Johnson. Great play by Johnson. Sean's had two plays, two big plays in this drive, but they set the little drag, the little sucker drag off the fake, had it wide open, and the big fella goes vertical. Well, they may have aired. I think they may be able to get a first down at the one inch line. Oh, that's great. You know, you, you coach this. When a guy quarterback throws, defensive lineman elevate. Yep. If you don't penetrate, elevate. Well, Johnson has had a pretty good season. And he's been having a very good day. They send two. And a flag down on the play. Whitehurst goes down at the 20. It looks like it's going to be a procedure penalty against Clemson. Now, Duke has to hope that they didn't cross the neutral zone. See what Jim Knight's call is going to be here. Knight working the game with Terrence Ramsey and John Bush. Discusses it with his crew. And then. Illegal motion on the offense. The penalty is declined. I thought so. Or that. Lambert, the guy who oh lurched forward to the line of scrimmage, half beat ahead of time. Uh, Duke declines it because it takes it down away. Third down. Third down. From the 17 yard line. Let's call a third down and goal from the 17. Big play coming up for Clemson. The throw, Whitehurst, fade route for the corner, knocked away and out of bounds. Good play by Brian Green covering J.J. McKelvey. That was nearly intercepted. Yep. Well, it all starts up front. Now, is a protection there? Yeah, nice little fade route. Beautifully thrown ball. You know, just, you know, you didn't have a lot of room to work with. No. That was just great defense. And you can see two blue shirts, one white shirt. You gotta like those numbers if you do. Aaron Hunt on to try a 33 yard field goal out of the hold of Jeff Scott. There's the kick. It is up and it is good. So Clemson gets something out of this drive, but not as much as they had hoped. The 34 yarder officially by Aaron Hunt. And Clemson pulls to within seven on a drive that started at their own 12. Duke 17 to 10 here in the third. We are back here at Wallace Wade Stadium in Durham where the Duke Blue Devils now have a seven point lead. Clemson scores on a 34 yard field goal by Aaron Hunt. Caps a 12 play march of 72 yards. Big plays a hook up of 21 yards to Jackie Robinson and a 25 yard run by Bernard Rampert. Robinson had a big block on Rampert's run. Yep. And here's the return. Elliott now bobbles the ball and he'll take it out at the 20 yard line. And that's where Duke will start first and 10 at their own 20. The ACC.com, your first stop for ACC info, including live stat updates from all conference games, football press conference audio, and links to all nine schools. The ACC.com, it's your front row seat for ACC sports on the web. Steve Martin here, Doc Walker, Mike Hogwood in Durham. A beautiful sunny day and a good football game. Led by Duke 17 to 10, they stand with the football at their own 20 yard line. Alex Wade, a lone setback behind Adam Smith. Two wide receivers. Tight end in motion, play action. And the pass intended for the second tight end, Kalen Powell, was thrown a little bit low. Some sort of pressure there on Adam Smith. And you watch it, and a, and a good trade for Clemson now is trying to get a little tighter on the coverage. I mean that ball had a chance but it's not like the first half when they were just like hitting guys you know wide open.
Duke has had pretty good luck on first down. They've averaged almost nine yards of play on first down. Second down and ten. And this is Smith trying to make something work. And can't do it. Rodney Thomas stops him cold. Vicious. You know, that's that's what you want in a linebacker. Here's a guy, fills a gap. I mean, perfect no hitter. He stepped right behind Inside, the block. Yeah. Well, Christian Mitchell never even had shot. Perfect no hitter. And he comes right in and punishes. Third down and ten now coming up for Duke, watching their momentum slip away somewhat. Clemson stiffening. They send two on a blitz. Pass is incomplete, intended for the tight end. All kinds of contact from John Leak and company. Well, the coverage was there. So yeah. I mean, that's that's how you compete. I mean, and Sampson for a back, a linebacker on a backer. That's the first time we've seen the physical will of the Clemson Tigers imposed on the Blue Duke Blue Devils. And that's the first time that Duke has gone three downs yeah, and out yeah. today. See, so now on the sidelines, on the blue sidelines, one of the assistants, somebody's got to come in there and read them the riot act because it's kind of in the law now. And you, you, you look at the scoreboard sometimes and it puts you to sleep, hypnotizes you. Trey McDonald's first punt of the day. Brian Mance is back. McDonald gets off a gun at the 31. Mance looking for some blocking help and instead is brought down by Roland the tight end on the play at the 36 yard line a nice 48 yard punt by Trey McDonald a four yard return by Brian Mance and that's where Clemson picks it up at their own 37 yard line down by seven we'll return after these messages from your local ACC station. Clemson Tiger fans follow their football team everywhere and we got a sea of orange here at Wallace Wade Stadium and they got great seats in the sun today. Temperature nearing 60 degrees and they're watching their team try to seize the momentum here. You know, they're great football fans. Yep, no look at that. doubt about it. They get it. And their football team is first and ten at their own 36 yard line. They force Duke to punt the last two. Blitz coming on for the Blue Devils. Clemson picks it up. Pass to the flats. Complete to Hamilton but picking him up. Right there is number 17, and that is Adam Green. Now, Alex Green. And now the nastiness has returned for, for Duke. All right, so House scoreboard. They're underway in the second quarter in Chapel Hill, where we'll be next week. Maryland and North Carolina tied it. Seven. Auburn, fresh off a big win over LSU. And Rutgers still up at the half. Iowa up in their game by 10. Here's Whitehurst back to throw, and he is. Sacked in the backfield. That's the third sack of the day for Oren Thompson. Now I'll tell you what, that Sean Johnson has jacked his game up. If he's not in on the play, he's influenced the play. That time he teams up with Thompson. And you see 96 there. Nice slip move. I mean, he just flat out beat William Henry on that play. And he's the guy that forced the quarterback out of the pocket. Actually, that's the fourth Duke, Duke sack of the day. Four wide receivers. Lambert the setback on third and 15. Whitehurst back to throw. Pass complete. It's to Rambert, and he rambles out to the 43-yard line. It could be a gain of about 11. It's still leave him shy of the first down. Well, that's the rat-a-tat-tat that you want. Multiple helmets at the point of attack. You know, that's what Ted Roof wants. And Rambert is slow to get up in front of the Duke bench. Ryan Fowler. Micah Harris, who was injured early. There's uh, Rambert. Fourth down and three, and so Duke's deep. This was an offensive game in the first half. It's become a defensive struggle in the second. Well, everything that Duke's offense lacked in that last series, their defense just came back in and said, <laughs> this is how you get it done. Well, the first play was minus three. The second play was a two-yard sack. And the third play was an 11-yard game, and it still is uh, three yards well, short. I think both defensive units are competing. The Tigers yeah. came out and showed their nasty streak, and so the Blue Devils come out and they said, we'll take that. Well, Rambert still being tended to on the Duke sidelines, and now he'll get up and remove himself from play under his own power. Looks usually like he'll be okay. Steve is that usually that second helmet that comes in. You've already been hit, and you don't expect that next one to come in. Boom, get you right in the temple shot. Minded for the best deals on cars, trucks, and SUVs, visit your local Toyota dealer today. Lynn Kopp is back to punt. That's what he's done so far this afternoon, up for his fourth punt. And Carrie Sharp is back to get it now for the Duke Blue Devils. 
Jim Crawford, front forward, Tigers. Corey Sharp, keeps the team for the Eagles. Kind of knuckles it up there, and Sharp will pick it up at the 16. And go down quickly by the time he gets to the 25 yard line. So 41 yard punt and an eight yard return. Hey fans, now's your chance to enter Toyota's You Pick 'em Sweepstakes. Just go online at jpsports.com, click on the Toyota banner to register and pick the winners. Weekly prizes will be given to the participant with the highest point total. The grand prize winner to be announced November 23rd will get a new 2003 Toyota 4Runner. The Toyota You Pick 'em Sweepstakes. See jpsports.com for official rules. You know, Steve, I just wonder what Mike Hogwood thinks about the attitude on the Duke sidelines. Because I really seemed like they were, you know, the offense didn't kind of have that edge. Yeah. And the Tigers did. And I, I can't wait to hear Mike's, you know, just feel, get a feel from Mike as to what's going on on the Duke sideline. Shoulders might be sagging a little bit. Rodney Thomas on the tackle. And Mike Hogwood, what do you got? Well, I tell you what, uh, the leaders on this team, guys like Chris Douglas and a few others, ha have noticed the same thing that Doc was noticing, to see, and they walked up and down the bench saying, come on, guys, we got to get back up. we got to get back up. We'll see now if they've been able to do it, but they've really been imploring their teammates on the sidelines to get back in this game. Second down and eight, inside handoff. Douglas breaks through, and then is pulled back from a potential big gain there. And... Getting up to the bottom of the pile, a name we've called all day, Rodney Thomas, has had a tremendous day. I'll tell you that Mike Hogwood, man. Nobody covers both sidelines like the Hawk. I mean, that guy, I mean, you know, he's quicker this year, too. Yes, he is. I think the offseason training has really worked out. Hawk hit the weight room. I mean, he's really, he's been working on aerobic work and his, you know, 4 by 40s 220s, and the whole thing. Really paid off. Stayed away from the pastry tray. Wade on third and one will not get it. Thomas, Leak, and a host of others in white and orange shirts. Vicious. Oh, boy. Yeah. The Tigers, I mean, both defensive units, that's my point. Both of these units on defense have, have put the, the game on their shoulders. Now, it's going to be whichever offense can show enough courage, you know, to combat that force. Yeah. Yep. That's what it's all about. Come out and do something different. Duke really has not gone to the air an awful lot today. They have uh, thrown two incompleted passes the previous series. But they had, but they had carry on for a score. Yeah. Sharp on a score and missed yep. it. Yep. Fourth down and two. Trey McDonald back to punt again. Here comes the kick. Nance is going to get away from it. It takes a Clemson bounce and it is down at the 30 yard line. A 39 yard punt. Two forty left to go here in the third quarter. Let's send it down to Mike Hogwood for a word on the Clemson defense. Well, they played that last series without big Donnell Washington and may have to go the game without him. He has an injured ankle and his return is very questionable. Well, that wa that uh, Clemson defense, though, with or without Washington, has forced three straight punts from the Duke Blue Devils. First and ten from the thirty-yard line. Inside handoff, Rambert, and nothing doing. No. Says Matt Zielinski. <laughs> Well, this is fun to watch now, and, and I can see exactly what's going on between those two two defensive units. They're out now. You show me, well, I'll show you, and um, and just taking everything away. Washington is a big loss for Clemson because of what he started to give them inside, and that was a turnaround for Clemson. This has been Charlie Whitehurst's day, and right now his team trails here by seven. Has a release in the flats, and that is Rambert. Rambert. Headed toward the first down marker gets a big block by Jackie Robinson that gets him ahead to the 42 yard line. It's a gain of 12. Well Robinson has blocked as well as I've seen any wide receiver block this season. I mean this kid is having fun with it. It's not a, you know he's not being forced to do it. It's a labor of love. I mean it's 6'1 190 pounds. This kid has been highly aggressive. Watch here at the end. Rambert kind of scooting. He comes right, right there. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That got him the first down. Here's the pass complete out to Youngblood. Sidesteps one tackle. Driven out of bound by Michael, Micah Harris. Good to see Micah back, too. Yeah. Micah was dinged up. Uh, knee injury in the first half. Really the heart and soul of that defense, man. He's headed to the sideline. Seven-yard gain. Brings up second down and three. Ball out to the 49-yard line. Clemson wasting no time. Will they be the first to score a touchdown here in the second half? They already have a field goal. And their defense seems to have things well in hand. 
On the option, Whitehurst. Ooh! <laughs> it's, oh, boy. He hit Sean Johnson head on. He's still going straight ahead. He's got the first down. Worth to win. I mean, plain and simple. If some guys talk it. Other guys lead by example. And right now, Charlie Whitehurst and his first start in here is showing people that he wants to stay there. Yep. You know, this is plain and simple that he wants the job and he's going to earn it. I can't I can't explain anymore with determination. First of all, nice fake on the option. Then watch that. Oh. See, he attacks the secondary. I mean, that's just priceless. Terrell Smith had him and couldn't hold on. First and ten. They're at the Duke 46 yard line. Play action. Whitehurst trying to escape Oren Thompson and throws it away. Thompson has really come on. Sophomore 270 pounder uh, is just competing. And once again, for the best deals on cars, trucks, and SUVs, visit your local Toyota dealer today. Second down, 10. Tight end coming off the field. Four wide receivers. You got McKelvey and Aries Curry to the bottom, Hamilton and Robinson to the top. Rambert stays behind for blocking. Whitehurst lets it go and cannot hook up. Boy, he with Jackie Robinson. At the end and guess who oh, was boy. there? Sean Johnson. <laughs> I mean, it's either Johnson or Thompson right now. These two guys like a law firm. <laughs> Johnson and Thompson. You know, we deliver hard knocks. Or a pharmaceutical firm. They're making Whitehurst pay. No question. Watch it at the end. Oh, thank goodness his knee didn't get locked up on that. That's right. Third down coming, though, for Clemson in the final minute of this third quarter. They're down by seven. They needed 10 yards to keep their drive alive. Here comes the dog. Yep. Hit as he threw. Pass incomplete behind Youngblood. But the pressure that Ryan Fowler put on had something to do with it. And the discipline and the timing of the blitz is so important. I mean, you're so anxious. You want to go. Now, I'll also say this. The Clemson quarterback needs to alter his cadence because Duke has hit the mark too often now. They're getting a great start, a great jump, because they've read into his cadence. He can change that. So, punt coming on here. For Win Cop. He'll try to kick Duke deep. Here is Sharp at the 10. Sharp dances around a couple of would-be tacklers and goes down right here at the 10. 36-yard punt. Not much of a return, if any. And that becomes a struggle of field position. And Duke doesn't have it right now. They're at their own 10-yard line. As we walk down the final minute of this third quarter, should be an interesting fourth. Now, you, you, talk about, you can talk about field position, you know, all you want. This comes down to nastiness. Yeah. Who wants this worse? And right now, Clemson on defense shows it. Duke on defense is showing it. But both offensive units have yet and yet to deliver that knockout punch. First down and 10 from the 10. This is the worst field position for Duke this afternoon. Wade is behind Smith. He'll be back to throw. His pass is intended for Sharp. And as much as these two quarterbacks were on the money in the first half, they've kind of faded a bit here in the second. Well, there's one thing for sure. There's nobody in an orange helmet that can cover Kerry Sharp. No. Now, he's open at will. The question is, can the quarterback get him the football? And that's the one thing that, that Carl Frank has got to get conveyed to his group. Five straight misses by Adam Smith after having a fine first half. Second down and ten. Blitz coming off the corner and the pass incomplete and thrown behind Ronnie Elliott. And that brings up third down and 10. Boy, it's amazing what pressure can do to a young person. We watched Adam Smith there who was smooth as silk in that first half. And now doesn't look real confident. No. You know, of late. And you look on the other side of the ball, uh, Charlie Whitehurst and the pressure he's been under. Look at that. Look at the yardage, Doc. You're yeah. right. They say Duke can't sit on the lead. They got to build the lead. Third down and 10 from the 10. Back to throw Smith again. Pass over the middle is complete to Alex Wade. Gets a little bit of room, but not enough for the first down. Maybe eight. 
And Duke's going to be forced to kick the football again. And I'll tell you what, that Rodney Thomas, that Thomas in the middle there, that's on the outside. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, Rodney Feaster as well, those middle linebackers. Now, somebody lit a fire under the Tigers' defense. I mean, that's evident. Well, they have brought it here in the second half. Trey McDonald back to kick. Derek Hamilton back to get this punt. Hamilton dances away from one tackler. This is where he's dangerous. Wall forming, and he's driven out of bounds. But now Clemson has excellent field position. Playmaker. McDonald, the kicker, had to drive him out of bounds at the 25-yard line, a 36-yard punt, a 25-yard return, and Clemson makes an opportunity thanks to the best all-purpose runner in the league, Derek Hamilton. Well, that's how it's gone through quarters. The only score in the second half was an Aaron Hunt field goal of 34 yards, and it's Duke 17-10. Derek Hamilton gets the punt return call. Brian Mance had returned all the previous punts. I mean, that's just, that's skill, everybody. You may think that's shiny tackling. I say, no, that's great skill. I mean, that's why he's the best. We talked about the field position. That 25-yard return set Clemson up at the 23-yard line. You, you, Clemson is not operating now as a team trailer. All right. They are operating like the team ahead. Or about to tie this thing. Whitehurst at the controls has four wide receivers. Trips to the right, or actually the left side. Young blood to the top. And he's got the ball headed to the corner, and Giuseppe Aguano won't let him go any further. Aguano slows him up with a 22 and a great open field play by Giuseppe Aguano. Look at the stats. Clemson's rushing game still hasn't come of age, but no. they've slowed Duke down somewhat. Yep, that's the key. And the passing yards, it's not enough. But the ball Duke control, again. ball control yeah. is, not, is not indicative of the score. No. Whitehurst on second down. Has some time. He'll carry it himself. Gets five yards up to the 15-yard line. Aguano and Fowler are in on the stop once again. You know what this reminds me of at this point, Steve? Are the two quarterbacks now. And this one, this kid now, Whitehurst, what he's saying is that I'm just going to make this thing happen. Yep. You know, I'm going to make it happen in the air. If it's not there, I'll make it happen on the ground. But I'm going to make it happen. That's what I sense. A red roof, red zone proficiency today for Clemson. They're 50% inside the red zone. Missed a field goal the first time they got down in here. And off goes to Kelly. And Kelly. Upended as it looked like he had burst through the hole. He ran into Ryan Fowler at the 12 yard line. Fowler said, Not so fast. He's a baller. He's close that to a first Ryan down. Fowler is a baller. You see double team block here at the side. Good, great double team, but vicious hit. Once again, I guarantee you. Brendan Duan. Duan again. Yep. That Duan, boy, he's a striker. All right, big fourth down play coming now for the Clemson Tigers. They're fourth and one. They're at the 13, and they're going to kick a field goal, and now they're going to call timeout. Jeff Scott says, we got to get things organized here. Came to this decision pretty quick. Fourth down, and actually less than a yard. They need the 12. What could they be thinking here? Well, Mike Hogwood is right on. I mean, he's right over there by Tommy Bowden. It'd be interesting to find out what Mike is, what he has been able to overhear. Tommy Bowden down there talking with the head linesman at that side of the field. And going over the options as Clemson calls the timeout on this key fourth down play. They're down by seven. They have the momentum. And next week we'll follow the Clemson Tigers to Keenan Stadium in Chapel Hill where the Tar Heels wait. It's always a great battle when these two interstate rivals go at each other. Clemson, North Carolina, our Sitco ACC game of the week coming away from Jefferson Pilot Sports. So the Tigers call timeout. Could they be rethinking the decision to send the kicker out? Let's go to the sidelines with more Mike Hogwood. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, Doc, you were uh, asking what Tommy Bowden was. He right. wants a measurement here. They realize that a touchdown will tie this game. And uh, it was when they Tommy made the decision to kick the field goal. 
He sent the field goal unit out, and then I think there was a big discussion of this offensive staff. They've called timeout. They want to know exactly how far they've got to go. They are seriously considering going for it here on fourth down. Is that your gut feeling, Hoggy? Do you think these guys will go for it? I mean, I look at the time on the clock. It. Yeah, I, I feel it too, Mike. Uh, Steve, I feel momentum right now is in orange. And you might have to seize this moment and just take them over the top. Because Duke, now defensively, is still playing like maniacs. But offensively right now, the, it seems like a little pressure's on them. Well, they also have to feel, can we get down here again? Because if we don't get it, mm -hmm. then we're in a situation of putting Duke But your defense back with is the ball. playing so well. Yeah, and they're down there at the 13-yard line. Right. So it's as good as a deep punt. So Clemson has changed their mind. The kicking unit is off the field. This is a very tight formation for Charlie Whitehurst. Are they going to force him to jump? No, nope, they're going for it. Quick handoff to the so. Jasmine. Ryan oh, no. Fowler. Fowler may have been there. Oh, boy. You talk about a pit bull. Chad Jasmine with the ball, but I don't believe the fullback got it. Let's see where they give him for a spot. Well, they gave it to the last guy there. And I tell you what, I saw some a blue movement <laughs> that was a little bit lower than those white shirts. Yep. Boy, it's going to be close. Johnson and Thompson been playing so well. Harris. Yeah, they're going to be close enough to measure. Whitehurst kind of trudging off the field with the shoulder sack as if they didn't well, get it. I still go with the decision to go for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They didn't get it. Now, here's the deal. They have forced Duke to three downs and out right. the last three times exactly. of the football. Yeah. Roof Rough Riders. There yeah. they go. There you go. Boy, that is just pure attitude. You, when it comes down to it, you say to yourself now, there's a yard to go. Who's going to get it? Who's going to stop it? And at the bottom of that pile, Buddy, there was some manhood. That was another manhood issue there. It's Roof. Dead roof. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, that's what is fun. You work all week, man, for a moment like that. All right, Duke gets the football, but they're not in great field position at their own 13-yard line. Inside handoff, Chris Douglas, and Clemson is there to shut down a play that worked in the first half. Doesn't work so well here in the second. John Leak is there, along with number 97. That is going to be Jawan Polk. He's had a couple of big tackles. 285-pound junior. They play a lot of people. Those Tigers have been rotating. And now this is Duke. Now this is the drive where Duke can redefine itself. It's played so well in the first half. Last two drives have happened inside the 20. Smith pass complete to Sean Johnson. We haven't called his number too much in the no. second half. Out to the 19. It's a gain of four. Justin Miller on the play. Six grab by Sean Johnson today. Miller with much tighter coverage. I still say the guy is Kerry Sharp. Mm -hmm. He's the man that the Tigers have no answer for, or have shown no answer for. It boils down to whether Adam Smith can get him the football. Big third down coming. Duke Playmaker. Is, Duke has missed their last four third down conversions. Third down and four. Smith has time, steps up, throws, Wade complete. Rodney Thomas leads the charge to bring him down, but not before he's made 11 yards on the play. Yeah, strong reception for Alex Wade. Kerry Sharp in a three-receiver side. They cleared out everyone, and, that, and that's a great call. Great call on the side, and pass protection there was highly sufficient, but it was the outside wideouts that cleared that space and allowed Alex Wade to have some daylight. The second catch of the day, this one for 12, first and 10. So Duke makes first down for the first time in the last three offensive series. Smith now checking off. Play clock down to four. He's going to work quickly. Gets the snap away. Throws over the middle to Landrum, and he can't come up with the ball, but a flag is thrown. Eric Meekins is covering on the play, and the senior from Easley, South Carolina, may have interfered with Santario Landrum. I well, see Meekins got away with one earlier where he played a similar style of coverage and wasn't called, and he, he, he got to make, make, make an aggressive move now. You look at 11-22 to go in the fourth quarter, so what he's doing, he's dictating the coverage on this, and it might have had a little contact. They're talking about the penalty and where they should mark it off from. Looks like the ball is going to be put in play in Clemson territory at the 47. Jim Knight and his staff talking it over here. In the meantime, Tommy Bowden is wondering why he couldn't take advantage of the field position given him by Derek Hamilton. 
15 yard face mask. Oh. On the defense, 15 yards, automatic mm. first down. The coverage was, was good. Yeah. The penalty was mask elsewhere. Though. Yeah, let's see if we can see. We'll find that inside. And the face mask on quarterback's thrown. Oh, I got oh, it. It's right the there. End. It's at the yeah. end of the coverage. Yep. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, see, Eric, you don't want I mean, you had beautiful coverage. You don't want to get called for that at the end of the play. You know, Eric is 6'3", 200 pounds, man. I mean, it's impressive that he can get out on the edge and cover, uh, cover wide outs. So the penalty gives Duke a first down. Pass is knocked away oh. the tight end. And that was dangerous. Feaster. It was dangerous because Feaster nearly, I mean, it looked like for a moment he might be able to pick that bad up boy up yeah. and take it the distance. <laughs> and both these teams, they want this so bad. I mean, it is highly competitive. Highly competitive. Second down and 10, 11 19 left to play. Duke trying to build on a seven point lead. Kelvin Moore, as you be watching him, you better believe he's going to circle that number of Kaylin Powell. Landrum and Sharp are wide. Smith going upstairs to Sharp. Complete. He's on his way. Touchdown, Duke. Adam Smith well, that's his team. It was just a matter of time. They, they have no answer for the guy. Gary Sharp gets in back of the Clemson defense and puts a decisive score on the board here in Durham. Gary Sharp is pure cash in the bank. And he's been doing it all afternoon long. They just simply couldn't get him to football. And this time they did. 54 yards downfield. Look at the celebration on the Duke sideline. As they take a 13-point lead that could build by one here on the kick after by Garber. He nails it through. And with 11-11 left to go in the fourth quarter, the Duke Blue Devils, who've gone 22 games without an ACC win, look like they're in shape to break that streak today. Carry Sharp for 54 yards. We are back. There's Carry Sharp. Sharp. Catches the touchdown aerial, his sixth touchdown reception of the season, capping an 87-yard march. They got the ball at the 13. A key play that moved the drive along was a 12-yard reception by tailback Alex Wade. He kept the chains moving, and Adam Smith converted the 54-yard touchdown pass. This is Justin Miller. And Miller, the true freshman, gets up over the 30-yard line. Let's watch this play again. Yeah, they got the absolute matchup, you know, that you want whenever you can get your speed guy, you know, away from a corner. And there's no way in the world anybody other than a cover corner has a chance, and he'd be he'd beating all of those guys. So he's the answer. Well, there's plenty of time left in this football game, but Clemson's got to show that they can move the marker here. They've had missed opportunities this afternoon. Blitz on by Oren Thompson, and the pass is thrown. In the vicinity of the Duke bench, that's Scott Brown, the defensive line coach who makes the catch for the pretty good catch, too. Yeah. Ice yeah. House, NCAA scoreboard, Maryland pushes ahead of North Carolina 24 7. Yeah, Terrapin's really getting on that offensive line, even with some injuries here. Auburn over Ole Miss 16 10 in the third. Look at this. Rutgers. It's got to be a typo. It's a typo. <laughs> Iowa 20 <to> 3. <laughs> and Michigan just rolls on on Michigan State. Whitehurst pass over the middle. It is complete to McKelvey. And a nice ball thrown by Whitehurst gets him into Duke territory at the 47 yard line. Oh, we know. Excuse me. I was saying that Larry Coker, coach, the head coach for Miami, uh, talking all week on radio, saying, now, I, I, I bet he's doing a Lou Holtz all week, saying, man, we really got to look after this Rutgers team. <laughs> well, he was right. Yeah. Four wide outs, Whitehurst with time, pass incomplete and almost picked off by Jamie and Small. That's a heck of a drop for a linebacker. Remember the first quarter when Whitehurst was just playing pitch and catch? Yep. That's what they've got to go to. They can score quickly. They can get down there in a hurry. He's getting some time yeah. now because Duke is kind of laying back a little bit. Until Thompson and Johnson 
that law firm until they start throwing the book at him. Oh, they bring the house now. Pass incomplete for Hamilton. Oh. Shooting him down is Alex Green, but he couldn't pick up the hot read that time. Tomahawk. And it's just nothing like it. When you deliver blows from the defensive side of the ball, I mean, it's like a dunk in basketball. And the Duke sideline starting to make some noise here. Third down and 10. Their team leading 24 to 10. Their defense performing very well, trying to dry this Clemson drive up near midfield. Whitehurst to throw. Has time. Oh, and man. again, yeah. Curry, yeah. But out there to cover was a linebacker, Ryan Fowler. He had time. He had a receiver open. That's a rare miss by Whitehurst. I'll tell you that. You know, we asked the question before the ball game. Would we see the, the Duke team that played NC State? Yeah. Or Maryland? Mm. This is clearly the team that played NC State. There's no question. Mm. Well, Maryland is a heck of a lot better than people are giving credit for. Whitehurst has hit only one of his last eight passes. Fourth down, ten, they're going for it. There are two touchdowns back, they've got to. No question. Whitehurst needs ten. Waits, guns, fires, complete to Curry. Curry eludes one receiver. He's got one to beat. Touchdown, Clemson. Just like that, the Tigers are within six. Yeah, it takes guts to have glory. And don't question Tommy Bobbins' people in terms of guts, because they have it. Aries Curry, 47 yards downfield, his second touchdown reception of the year, at a very propitious time for Clemson. That is as good as it gets under pressure when you have to make a play and those kids come up large. Duke's lead trimmed to eight. Aaron Hunt on for the point after. Out of the hole to Jeff Scott. The kick is up and it is good. And the Clemson Tigers serve notice that there's still plenty of time left in this football game. They're the down football. by seven. This is outstanding. Oh, what Charlie a game. Whitehurst goes upstairs, 47 yards downfield. Great patience, crossing pattern by Curry, and he's on his way. These two teams have put on a show. Charlie Whitehurst, redshirt freshman quarterback for the Clemson Tigers, gets the start today, and he goes upstairs 47 yards to Aries Curry. Didn't take him long to do it. He was doing it on fourth and 10. Six plays, 69 yards, 46 seconds. Is there anything better than that? They had a fourth and one. They don't get it. Duke takes the ball down and makes him pay. They come right back and put points on the board. Now, let's see. It's, the, the offenses rise. We've had the defenses stiffen. And Elliott will not run this out. It'll come out to the 20-yard line. And now the Duke Blue Devils looking to take some time off the clock in this possession and keep Clemson off the field. Well, Ted Roof, Rough Riders have been putting enormous pressure on the quarterback. This time they opt to just rush three guys, and you had to pay for it. Because if you give Charlie Whitehurst time, he makes you pay. And that is Aries Curry for his second touchdown of the year. Well, it was Curry who was open earlier, wide open on a bomb, and it was a perfectly thrown football by Charlie Whitehurst and uh, the son, of, according to Coach Coach Hogwood on the sidelines, said he uh, couldn't hold it in. First and ten at the twenty, inside handoff on the draw. Oh, Douglas going nowhere, and Thomas first man in the stop. Oh, Rodney That's Thomas. Rodney Thomas. His, he's a beast. He's had a day. He's a senior from Cadwell, <laughs> Georgia. Man. I don't know. He's got to be in double figures. He's got to be closed in on 15 tackles. He, as many as he wants. Yeah. We have called his number all day Absolute long. Absolute beast. <laughs> no gain for Douglas. I mean, he's a few hits away from sideboard category. I mean, he's getting close. <laughs> he may be the first one today. Three wide out. Smith draw play Douglas. Fields his way along the left side. This time, Thomas misses a block. And coming up to get him was Eric Meekins, but it's a nice gain on the play for Chris Douglas out to the 28-yard line, and it'll be an eight-yard gain. Well, there's that ground attack we talked about in our open between uh, Douglas and Wade, both guys averaging close to five yards a crack. That's what Duke needs right now, five yards a clip in that ground game to work that clock. Rodney, here's the look again. Thomas missed that tackle. That's rare. Yeah, uh, it's rare because he and Leak both have 15 on the day, according to Freddie Kiger. That's sick. That's sick. Third down and three. Option play, Smith not enough. 
They won't give him much on this one. Out to the 29, he needs the 30. Tackle made by Khalid Vaughn. Boy, Vaughn came out of the earth on that one. 260 pounder. <laughs> really, yeah, that that could be the play. May have hurt his hand. I got a vision on that. Yeah, he gave it up, boy. Came out of the earth. Strong play. Came out of the earth on that play. <laughs> kind of blended in. I Camouflage. Like it's not easy to do. Trey McDonald on the punt. He's back this time. This is Hamilton. Uh -oh. And he gets a bad one off. And Clemson is going to have excellent field position at midfield, actually a yard inside Duke territory. So Trey McDonald shanks one off the side of his foot. A 20 yard punt. Pressure makes men do some unusual things. Well, two of the last three Clemson possessions have taken place on the Duke side of the field. They gave it up on downs the first time. Let's see what happens this time as there's seven points back. When you look at Charlie Whitehurst, 25 of 40, 274 yards, a freshman record, and two scores for the Tigers at Clemson. But right now, I guarantee you that uh, Ted Roof's Rough Riders are about to bring it because you know, they look back and you can imagine what Ted said to them. Hey, guys, fourth down, we give up a score. We got to go out and take things over. Willie Simmons has looked on with interest. He's uh, been on the beach today. And Willie's a heck of a quarterback. Yeah, we just is. turned the ball over. Yep. You know, and, and with Clemson's defense, if you just give them a chance, you're going to win most of your ball games. That's a fact. And with just skilled guys and return guys, they just got too much talent. You just can't constantly put your defense in the other end of the field, no. having to defend the short field. And that hasn't happened too much today. Fans, jpsports.com has the coverage you want. No one knows the ACC like JP Sports. And we bring the information to you right there online. Tune in each week for previews of upcoming games, broadcast information, many other exciting features. For the inside scoop, log on to jpsports.com. Steve Martin here along with Doc Walker, Mike Hogwood. It's been an interesting day and a great game between these two. And now Charlie Whitehurst with plenty of time and great field position is back on the field. Clemson has started their last four drives at their own 30. The Duke 22, the Clemson 31, and now the Duke 49. Here they come. Yep. So here White they come. Good protection. Ball out to Hamilton complete. Touchdown Clemson. And here they go. 49 yards, Whitehurst for his third touchdown pass of the day. The first one to one of the top all-purpose men in the league, Derek Hamilton. There's just no substitute for confidence. And the Clemson Tigers are just overflowing with confidence right now on both sides of the ball. And there's Mobs. Derek Hamilton from Dillon, South Carolina, just a sophomore. Hauls that in. That's his second touchdown reception of the year. Here comes the point after to tie it up. Aaron Hunt through the uprights, and we've got a new ball game with 8:03 left to go here in Durham. It's all tied at 24 all. As good as Duke has played on defense, they are two plays away from walking the dog on this game and having it be all about the Blue Devils. Two game, two plays out, yeah. and now it comes back to that offense. If you get an inch, if you get one more yard, you keep the drive alive. Now Duke is gonna be forced to put the ball up a little bit more, be less conservative. Here's the pass. Oh, right in stride for Derek Hamilton. Beautifully done. But see, it's one thing Duke has. And now, you know, the Clemson Tiger receivers are starting to take over, but Terry Sharp has no answer. So it's some way to get back to him. Here you watch it again. Boy, this is what every kid dreams of. The long bomb ball right on the money. You score, and your team has a chance to win. And look how quickly Clemson has done it. They've used only 53 seconds off the clock here in the fourth quarter to tie this football game up. Hamilton on the 49-yard pass reception from Whitehurst. That's his third TD pass of the day. And we've got a new ball game at the 8.03 mark here in the fourth quarter. One play, 49 yards. It's like getting kicked in the gut. Oh, you know, but you have to recover from it because there's enough time now yep. for both teams to control the destiny. But, you know, the home team here, you want to feel like you have an advantage. Yep. But you got to have your quarterback execute. Elliott again will not come out. They'll go to the 20-yard line. 
And that's where Clemson, or rather Duke, would start first and ten. Well, it's still a classic two gunslingers. You know, we might as well be out of the OK Corral. Yep. And these two slingers are just doing it now. Well, Whitehurst has been doing more of it here in the fourth quarter. Smith is going to have to bring it now because Duke has to move the football. And it has the weapons to do it. You know, and you also have to trust to look at what is his strength. Daryl Scott has just entered the game. 210 pound sophomore. He's throwing a touchdown pass. Yep. Today. Don't get too far away from that big offensive line. First down and 10 from the 20. Smith back there at quarterback. Chris Douglas in the backfield with him. Clemson shows blitz. Ball deflected. No, incomplete. Nick East has got a hand on the football. Brian McNeil almost came up with it. Boy, that would have been a trimmer. It would have been oh, held all the way down to South Carolina. Oh, it would have been. You know, at the first down, and once again, when they were successful, they were averaging about seven yards per crack on first down. Boy, look how close see, McNeil came. Yeah. I mean, that's. They almost. See, eight. they were. Now, you know, you, you need to be successful on first down. When you take the run out of the game, now it becomes high risk football. Second down, 10. Score tied at 24. Got the crossing right on that. Pass complete to Landrum, but it's not for much, Doc. Forward progress gets him up to the 23 yard line. Well, right now it's all about confidence. And what they need to do is string together a few good plays because that momentum now is in orange. Yep. And sure you got to work it away. And when in doubt, go to your playmaker, Kerry Sharp. Eric Sampson makes the tackle on that last play. Third down, down seven. Not a bad play to get those two big tight ends involved as well. They found some success in that earlier. We got one of them in. He's on the right side of the formation. Three wide receivers out on third and seven. Score tied. Adam Smith with time throwing for the flats for Sharp. Almost picked off. Now we've been picked yes. up. Yeah. It's Justin Miller, the true freshman. And this game has turned on three plays. Okay. That's the third of them. At the 39 yard line of Duke. That's where being 5'11, 170 played against Sharp. You know, you got to know who to where to put the ball based on who you're throwing it to. And again, Adam Smith has had a heck of a ball game. He puts a little loft on this one. Yep. Well, you can't loft to a guy 5'11. You need to use your gun. What a play use by your gun. Yeah, you just got to use your gun on this. I like where you're going. Go to your playmaker, even though he's doubled. You know, if you're going to put it to him, you got to pop it to him. Wow. <laughs> what a game here in Durham. What a comeback by Clemson. Down 24 to 10. They waste no time at all, spending only 53 seconds to tie it. But see, Duke is still, it's a tie ball game. It's in their backyard. Right now, they got to keep the self esteem high. If you fall into that trap of feeling sorry for yourself, then you may end up losing this thing by 14. Uh, adjust the game clock here a little bit. 7.34 left to play, and Charlie Whitehurst is back out on the field. Three, four wide receivers out inside handoff Rambert. And Rambert tied up there by Zelinski. Nothing. Now, Oren Thompson is there as well. And so Clemson's attempt to kind of shake up the cadence here. So the interception is given Clemson the ball for the third time in the last four possessions in Duke territory at the 39. Got good hands on that snap. Here comes the pitch. It's out there to Youngblood. And Youngblood driven out of bounds at the 30, actually the 29 yard line. Alex Green is there to do it. It's a nine yard gain, eight yard gain. A little bit, a little rude on the end of that. Yeah, it was. <laughs> Well, that's the beauty of football. You can be obnoxious sometimes physically. <laughs> that is it there. But, you know, you get the yardage. Third down and two. A very short two. They need the 28 for a first down. They're at the 29 and a half. And off comes to Rambert, and Rambert has the first down. Terrell Smith is in there on the tackle along with Sean Johnson. Look at the Ice House scoreboard. Maryland piling it on here at the half against North Carolina 31 to 7. Auburn pulls a little bit of farther away from Ole Miss. And Miami has taken the lead. Number one looks like it might prevail. That computer's not going to like it. 
<laughs> First and ten. Whitehurst out of the shotgun pass complete to Hamilton. Spins away from one would be tackler. And he and fumbled. He's the lost the ball. Duke's got it. Brian Green comes up with the ball. And they're going to call it down. The ball blown dead before the fumble. Clemson maintains possession. Carl well, Franks looks on in disbelief. Coach Bob looks along and says, with relief. Yes. It's a first down on top of that to add insult to injury. Now you see great athletic move by the playmaker. Now he lost that ball. I mean, at that point, to me, there, just with real speed, looked like he lost it. First and 10 from the 15-yard line. That may be. Duke brings it. Pass complete. Touchdown, Clemson. Jackie Robinson. No, that's J.J. McKelvey. That's McKelvey. Boy, yep. they're nasty. Oh, boy. They are nasty. McKelvey with a touchdown. 15 yards for the score. With 6.09 left to play. Whitehurst strikes for the third straight time and the fourth time today. Well, they have dictated tempo in this one. You know, had a good break on the fumble or near fumble or lack thereof. And then they just attack the goal line. McKelvey gets in on his third touchdown reception of the year. Aaron Hunt for the kick. It is up and it is good. And Clemson has struck quickly again. 21 unanswered points after going down 24 to 10. They come back and score on the 15 yard hookup from Charlie Whitehurst to J.J. McKelvey. And the Tigers have the lead for only the second time today. Well, there is J.J. McKelvey on the sidelines. Clemson up 31-24 with 21 unanswered points. Three sta straight strikes from the arm of Charlie Whitehurst. Well, I believe it solidified his spot, at least for another week. I would think so. Yeah, Elliott's going to return this one. Elliott tried to change direction and gets flattened at the 19-yard line. And now, here's the call that we might have a question about. Hamilton with the ball. Watch what happens. Is it a fumble? Well, the ball is stripped right there for his down. Yep. His knee has not touched. The ball no. is out. That's right. And yep. then that uh, gave Clemson life to do this play. <laughs> what, a, what a play on that. Yep. You know, and catching it. But again, we, when we slow it down, you don't have that luxury yep. when you're wearing those stripes and you're doing a exactly. real battle. Yep. That, that happened a lot faster than we showed it. First and 10 at the 19. Smith with lots of time throws oh right into double coverage but Wade somehow picked it up at the 23 yard line a flag down in the secondary. <laughs> 552 left two minutes and 18 seconds it's taken Charlie Whitehurst to generate 21 points. I'm starting to think that Thomas and Leak have a little side little burger wager going, you know. <laughs> I mean, because these two guys, man, they are nuts. Yeah, this is going to be a break for Duke. But you know what? Clemson was able to be void of the scoreboard and play ball. Duke's got to do it now. Yeah. You know, that you can't feel sorry Holy for yourself. By the defense, the foul was committed against an eligible receiver. The pass crossed the line, 10 yards, automatic first down. That takes it out to the 30 yard line and gives Adam Smith a little bit of room. Now he's been able to come up big. He hit Carrie Sharp for a touchdown pass of 54 yards. It seems eons ago, but actually it was only six minutes ago. But he 11 11 mark. But Stevie's had, it, have had him open three times. Yeah. For scores. Just only hit him once. They can do it. Sharp is a slot receiver to the wide side of the field. The top side, if you will. Draw play, Alex Wade. Wade picking his way ahead. Guess who got him? Rodney Thomas. Mm -hmm. That's about a five-yard gain to the 35-yard line. But you can almost close your eyes and just say it was either Thomas or Leak, and yep. you'd probably be right. Now, those two guys have played well, but you know the one thing about confidence, this is what gets Duke its confidence. It's Douglas and Wade pounding it on the ground, getting their play action game back in order. Second down, down five. Out of the shotgun, Smith. 
Four man rush pass is again to Wade and again into coverage and this time coverage wins. Well he had no one open and that's the time where he needed to use his legs. You know the one thing that I think the turning point in this ball game was when Charlie Whitehurst ran in there and took on a couple of DBs right before the end of the half. Yep. You know sometimes I think a quarterback needs to jog the mind a bit and go in and attack some people physically to get himself going. And, and I think Adam Smith now is due. He, he needs a big play yep. to define his game. Duke had missed on only two first down conversions first half. They are 8 of 17 for the game. And only have converted one in the second half. Smith the throw downfield. Oh, incomplete intended for Landrum. And a flag down on the play. Yeah, he might put the hel helmet the helmet on that. He missed his tight end. He had Andy Rowland on the inside going right down the pipe. And he had him and he missed him. Well, let's see what the flag is going to be. Sampson covering on the play. Tommy West concerned that penalties may. Yeah, it looks like a personal foul. Might have been a little bit too more attitude, too much attitude on that hit. Tommy Bowden concerned that his team may push Duke down the field or pull him down the field with penalties. Jim Knight and crew. Well, you know, there's a fine line between football and then you know injuries and creating injuries or enhancing one's ability. To be injured. That's Tommy Bowden, you've been under fire down there in South Carolina. They have a lot of expectations of this football program. Now that doesn't mean they're right just because he's under fire. Personal foul on the defense, launching and leading with a helmet, illegal contact, sideline warning against the defensive team. 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. That gives Duke field position at the 50. Wow. And what? Listen to the sound of this. Right on the face mask. Yeah, that was face to face. First and 10 at midfield. Smith with some room to operate. Has a man complete. Sean Johnson dropped the football. Now, is that a possession? That'll be the question. It's incomplete. Okay. The linesman said no. Didn't have it. Now ground angle. Boy, what? That's a nice shot. Is that Lance Stewart? Oh, look at that. Mance covering on the play. It's ruled incomplete. No. Yeah, there, there it goes. Yeah. And we take another look. And that's, that's what great camera look. Like. Great work. Great, great work by our people, Jefferson Pilot, getting it done. That's Gary Parsons. Well, wait a minute. That's Parsons. Let me take that back. Let me just. <laughs> <laughs> he had a tough day. Gets stung in the mouth by a, a bee this morning. Here's Smith. Catch is made by Landrum. It's a three-yard game. And now time's starting to become a factor as Mance comes up to tackle. Now that's my guy, Gary Parsons. He knows, man. Much love for him. He's tough as nails. Here's a guy. Yeah, there he is. He's old as the hills, too. Just well, like now you're saying that now. <laughs> now. I just said he was tough. Now you're going to go after his age. I know what you're thinking, Gary. Third down and seven. Third down and seven for the Clem for the Duke Blue Devils. Trailing here, 31-24. 4-16 left to go. 21 points unanswered by the Clemson Tigers. Have Duke in a hole. Stepping up, firing. Smith and the shot. Sharp still on his feet. Sharp dances away from the defenders and is driven out of bounds at the 12 yard line. Eric Meekin saves the play and now the momentum switches to Duke. When in doubt, go to your playmaker. Your earth shaker. Well, he's the, oh, oh, oh real time maker, player. Boy, this is nice. And this kid knows what to do with it. Now watch him make people miss. And he's going to get out of bounds, save a little clock time. But he's uh, he's the man. That's his fifth catch of the day. Gary Sharp has already caught a 54-yard aerial for a touchdown. First and 10 from the 13. Play action, Adam Smith going for the end zone. Has his tight end, but overthrows him. Yeah, he didn't have enough, not enough room for that one. And an enormous pressure by the Tigers. Yeah. I mean, I think Polk was back in there again, of course. McNeil has been there all afternoon long. Of course, Deshaun Polk is also a guy who's emerging. 
The incompleted pass stops the clock with 3.54 left to go. Duke has all of its timeouts. Clemson is used one. Adam Smith, three wide receivers out. Sharp is out of the ball game. The pass is behind Lance Thompson with Brian Mance covering. Clock stops after a roll of only four seconds. Now this is where Steve-O, where I say a guy like Sharp, if you're a playmaker, you know, and I consider him cash money, he's got to be in the ball game. Yeah. You can't put your hand up and say you got to come out there. You come out after the game's over with. And that's why. His receptions there, averaging 24.4 yards per catch. But if you're going to be a playmaker, you have to be in the game. Mm -hmm. No question. Third down and 10. Now all of a sudden, another big third down conversion for the Duke offense. Field goal doesn't cut it. It's got to be six. And right now, it's got to be 10 yards. Smith checking off. Play clock down to three. Just got the snap away in time. Stands in, delivers. Oh, off the hands of Landrum. He had it. Yep. That was six. He had it. Post pattern by Landrum. Boy, he had it. And where the Tigers cashed in on situations like this, good pass pro. Ball right in your living room. The extension, oh. got to make that play. Yep. Ball is there. Ball is there. To win, you got to make big plays. That was a big one. Fourth down and 10. Play of the game right here. Low snap. Ball open, Landon knocked away by Eric Beacons in the end zone. Landrum never saw him coming. What a play by Meekins to reach right over Santario Landrum and knock the ball away with 3.41 left. Uh, Meekins is sure happy that wasn't Terry Sharp. He steps up on this one. And this is for the money. We've seen two big fourth down plays. Buddy, that is outstanding play in the secondary. You have to give it up for this one. Meekins again with the great hand in right on the money. Boy, it didn't get any better than that, and it was when you needed it. Adam Smith said, I put it there. Took a great play to turn it away. All well, right. Had two shots. Clemson now, first and 10 at their own 13-yard line. Whitehurst, he's going to throw. Passes out there complete to his fullback, Jasmine. And Jasmine is close to another first down. Now he's lost the ball. But I think they blew it dead. And Duke has got to say, now get the ball back. Yep. Clemson's got to say, let's put this thing away. Duke's got to say, no, we're still in this thing. But it's 329 left. You got time. You got time. Let's go to the sidelines of Mike Hogwood. You talk about a day in your first day as a starting quarterback. Look at the numbers on Charlie Whitehurst. No one in Clemson history has had the kind of day that he's had. As he set a single game record for completions, yardage, tied for touchdown passes. What a day for Charlie Whitehurst, the uh, red shirt freshman from Georgia. And by the way, the, these Clemson players being told to stay in bounds, keep that clock running at all possible. And Mike Hogwood, the one play that I'll, I still think defined him was when he ran the football and he took on those secondary. Those guys, I think that's the play that defined him, despite the great passing yardage. Yep, no question. He showed some leadership in that, on those plays and then came back in the second half when afforded the opportunity down 24 to 10. He delivered, got some field position help, and threw some bullets. Clock rolled down to 319. Boy, Mike Hogwood has had the absolute best seat in the house. <laughs> I mean, being um, among those both sidelines, being able to feel the flavor of this game, I mean, that had to be unbelievable. Whitehurst now picking up 12 yards on that first play to Jasmine. And Carl Franks understand, I mean, he, he, he's not out of this thing. No. He, he just got to get his people convinced of that. They got to have a stop, though. Got to get a stop. Got to get And his defense has played outstanding. They had three bad plays. Other than that, they were dominant. Yeah, they're having trouble here with the play clock, which is now rolling on. Now it wouldn't start. Now it will. You see it on the screen. 
Duke has been strong when they blitz. Here's the play action fake. Here's the uh oh, there's no McKelvey, and he's got another first down. That's well, interesting that Clemson continuing to air the ball out with as much time left as they have, and now a seven point lead. They Fearless. get another first down. Fearless. Fearless. I mean, when you, you, you go for it on fourth and one, you go for it on fourth and ten, I mean, that's your style. He's at five straight passes now. Timeout Duke. They have two left. Five straight passes and three of them have been touchdowns. Yeah. <laughs> How do you not start him next week? I don't think that's an issue anymore. Yeah, I'm in dissent. Yeah, I think Tommy Bowden has found his quarterback here for a while. And we'll see him next week down in Keenan Stadium. Let's see how they've scored. It took 218 to do this. Young Blood catches the first. That makes it 24 17. Oh, what a throw. Look at the slide. The yeah. Aries Curry. That's for 49 yards. That's 24 24. And then this one, the JJ McKelvey. Hangs on to get into the end zone, and that gives the Tigers a 31-24 lead. Michael Kane, a Michael quarterback, a Clemson Tiger. Yeah. A guy I consider one of the best at what he does in the entire country. And uh, you know, a disappointment in one week, you know, NC State disappointment, and this one is a thrill in it. And the Tigers are right where they want to be. Of course, talking on the sidelines with Brad Scott, former South Carolina head football coach. Mm -hmm. And, uh, now both teams very well coached. I mean we've seen the fruits of their labor of hard week of practice and these kids have played their hearts out. Well both teams right. coming off bad performances last mm -hmm. week. You uh, couldn't tell today. No you couldn't. Tommy no, Bowden couldn't. took on the took on shoulder responsibility for his team not playing well against Maryland. And of course uh, Duke did not come out with any mental intensity against Maryland and it showed. Now that's a uh, Clemson lost to NC State. Yeah, say, yeah. But still, both teams well represented, no question about it. And it, the game is still in question. Yep. 3 11 left to play. First and 10. Here's Rambert, and he gets up a couple of yards. Follow the first to hit him. DeJuan and Warren Thompson finish him off. And now, maybe another timeout taken here. Well, to think about it with the, you know, the old football center up and running and the commitment that's been made here for Duke football is definitely worthy of it. Timeout on the field with 305 left. Clemson by seven. We'll be back. Play comes back quickly. Uh, Charlie Whitehurst carries on the play and heads to the corner. Can't get himself out of bounds. Doesn't want to either. Tries to cut up inside. Here's the play again. It wouldn't be good. Nope. On second down and nine. He cuts up inside. And actually loses a couple of yards on the play. It's third down, and Duke now will call their final timeout. Paul Franks talking things over with Jim Knight. Clemson with only 53 yards on the ground. The rest over 350 yards in the air. And of course we'll see them next week as they continue their march toward bowl eligibility. Provided they hang on here. Clemson Tigers taking on the North Carolina Tar Heels. It's one of the great rivalries in the ACC. Both teams were prominent in the 80s and knocking each other's block off. We'll see a continuation of that rivalry tomorrow or rather next Saturday from Keenan Stadium. Got some game breakers in that game too. Derek Hamilton who's caught a touchdown pass today. Sam Aiken for the Tar Heels. John Bunning's team having a tough season. But you throw it out the window and Clemson and North Carolina go at it. And we'll show it to you next Saturday here in our Sitco ACC game of the week. Charlie Whitehurst the flavor of the day here. Has have a big day with four touchdown passes three in the second half to rally his team from a 14 point deficit and right now they have a seven point lead but there's still 257 left to go and he's facing a key third down and 11. Duke however comes down the stretch here with no timeouts remaining. They just exercised their last stoppage of the clock. And now Whitehurst must convert. Third and 11. 
And they bring the pressure. Pushes. And he gave that a fumble. Yes, he did. Duke says they've got it. Gerald Smith says they've got it. Well, Duke did what they've done best all day, and that is send the dogs after Whitehurst. It was our key at halftime. Duke would have to continue to pressure. Duke's got the football. Matt Zielinski comes up with a fumble recovery with 2.48 left to play. And what a break for the Duke Blue Devils. Here it is. Oh, boy. Once again, running backs. I don't care how talented oh. you are. You have to be able to pass protect. Where is that? And football? that was a pitiful effort on the edge. So Duke's got the football back, and we got a player injured on the play. Can't see who that is. Well, I'll tell you, Rambert's going to hate to see that film because he's a good football player. But he did not have a great effort on that pass protection. Cedric Johnson is the player down left guard from Barwick, Georgia. 4, 315, sophomore. And he'll get up a little slowly here with 218, 248 left to play. Still plenty of time left, and Duke in excellent field position. They get the ball on the fumble recovery at the 24 yard line. Adam Smith has a chance here with another shot to get it in the end zone and then the key decision coming up for Carl Frank if they do succeed the deuce is wild <laughs> you go for that get the certain one and maybe look to get the ball back or take it into overtime you have no timeouts let's see if we can see what happened to Cedric Johnson. That is definitely. That's him in the back. That the yeah. Whitehurst falls over him. Yes, yeah, probably down at the bottom of the that scrum, going for the ball. You'd be surprised how often that ball changes hands. And Clemson not in a situation where they can afford a lot of injuries on that offensive line. Derek Brantley, their left tackle, went down with an injury. Yeah. And that was a big one. And then Nick Black, who is a backup guard. We don't replace Brantley like that. He just no. meant so much to the Tigers. And that weakens you now. The Clemson defense has to hold. 248 left to go. What an entertaining game here in Durham. Clemson and Duke doing battle. Duke trying to shake a 22 game losing streak in conference play and a four game losing streak in their season. And trying to spoil Clemson's road to bowl eligibility. Clemson came in here off a tough loss to NC State 38 to 6. The schedule gets somewhat easier from here on out. But this is a game that the Clemson Tigers have won more often than not. And right now they're in the lead, but they're defending on the short end of the field. Adam Smith back to throw. Has time over the middle. Complete to the tight end. Powell, he drops the football. But they may blow it dead. No, they're going to say incomplete. Kalen Powell did not have it long enough. Somebody has got to want to be a hero. And what Duke needs now is a hero. You know, it's hard enough to get open in this game. Ball is there. See, I, oh man, oh. that was close. Yeah. Looks like the big fella took a, took at least a step. There's been some interesting calls in this. Well, one. there's been some interesting hits yep. in this game. All uh, precipitated through contact. Twice we've had fumbles that probably should have been fumbles, but they have not been ruled as such. One each side. Here's Smith to throw as a man down in the end zone. Tight end, Roland, touchdown! Andy Roland grabs it off the shoulder pad of John Lee and score. When in doubt, give your tight end a shot. <laughs> If you want to win, I knew that was coming. <laughs> oh, come on. These guys have earned that. I mean, on both sides of the ball, we've had a lot of great talent here, you know, when it counted most. And Duke going for the tie. At least they're lining up as such. Garber there. Here comes the kick. It's away, and it is good. High ball game with 2.36 left to play. 31 31. 
Adam Smith goes upstairs. Look at the pass, bro. Perfect. Ball on the mark. Go get it, big fella. Oh, what a catch. Man, he went out and got it. See, so you need a hero. You need a hero. You called for one. You got it. Well, you got to get it. I mean, it's not going to be easy. Boy, that's just, that is outstanding. Great camera work once again. Second touchdown of the season for Roland. It was a historical day in Death Valley in 1997. Tony Horn scored on a 34-yard reception late in the game. That tied the score at 20 and sent the game into overtime. The first ever overtime between ACC teams. And in the extra session, David Richardson kicked a 36-yard field goal. Clemson up three on the defensive possession for the Tigers. Raheem Abdullah intercepts Bobby Campbell. Takes it to the house. 29-20 the final. The first ever overtime game in the ACC and we may be faced with the same prospect here in about two minutes and 36 seconds. Last ACC win November 13th 1999 against Wake Forest. And Garber is getting ready to kick it away. Two thirty six left to play Andy Roland hauls in the pass. A twenty four yarder to tie this game up. All right here's Justin Miller who's a game breaker right up the middle and then down to the sideline on the left side. The return is by Justin Miller. Yard line. Now Clemson has two timeouts remaining with two twenty six left to play. Well, I don't think we have any doubt as to what Clemson is going to do. No. They're going to come up pitch. And they have the ability to do that. Whitehurst has had a great day. From a confidence standpoint, but his turnover tied the ball game up. Tommy Bowden continues to be plagued by turnovers by his quarterback. First and ten. Throw to the flats. No. And Hamilton watches it go out of bounds. And Clemson at their own 39 yard line. Trying to get back on top. They might have the last say here. With 2.20 left to go. And then we're facing the prospect of overtime. Overtime. We haven't had one here for a while. No, we haven't. We haven't. I'm not sure we're going to have one today. Whitehurst back to throw. Has some time. Passes incomplete oh, yeah. for Hamilton. Add him. Yeah. Add him there. That's only the third time today where he hasn't been under a lot of pressure where right. he's missed a throw. Mm -hmm. He's been that good. Yes, he has. And here we look. Yeah, see, there it is. Yep. Just overshot him. Third down and ten now for Clemson. Duke is out of timeouts, mind you. Whitehurst scrambles away from one, gets it to the flats complete. It's Hamilton, and he gets out of bounds, pushed there at the Duke 41 yard line. See, that's what the part about this kid is so impressive for me. You know, I mean, his throwing is one thing. He's a, he, he can do that, but the fa watch him compete. Now he knows that he's going to get, take, get hit, but the ball is right on the numbers. And he's done that all afternoon long. Pushes the ball upfield 19 yards for a first down in Duke territory at the 41. Not long enough yet for a field goal. Here is Whitehurst. The pass is complete. And that is going to be McKelvey, who scored the go ahead touchdown. He's got another first down, it looks like, at the 31. DeWan in there for the tackle for Duke. But they keep moving the chains and they keep getting closer to Aaron Hunt territory. Hunt has hit a field goal so far today is 9 for 12 on the season. And his longest is 47. His career longest is 48. We're just outside that territory now at the 31-yard line. Duke showing pressure. They come right up the middle. Clemson picks it up. Pass complete. At the 20 yard line of McKelvey with a minute 37 left to go. The clock continues to roll because it was A, neither a first down or B, out of bounds. Hey, you watch McKelvey work on the outside. 
Good explosion off the ball. Steph, now come back and meet it. Boy, that's good hands. Ten, good hands. Tenth reception of the day for McKelvey. It's the second time that's happened to him this season. And I believe that's the third time that a Clemson receiver has caught ten balls in the same game. It'll be second down. They're not shy when it comes to tossing the field. And this is close enough for a measurement here now. Stops the clock with 129 left, and it is probably the half a football length. Aaron Hunt lining up on the sidelines. They are in his reach now. Because if you get down to the 20, back it up seven, add 10, that's a 37 yard field goal. That's makeable. Although he has missed a 42 yarder today. Whitehurst with 420 yards passing. That's the best in the ACC for a single day this season. Second down and one for Clemson with a minute 29 left to play. They're in the range of their field goal kicker. What they want to make sure is that Duke gets very little time to do anything with the football. Here's the handoff. Remember? Oh, oh hit! Yes. Yes. Rembrandt heading for more and is dragged down inside the four yard line. A play that should have stopped at the point of attack and Rembert bounces outside for what is going to be a 15 16 yard game. Unbelievable big Cecil Johnson 65 for Clemson back in the ball game. Well, what penetration at the bottom of that Duan at the bottom of the pile could not make the play. But Buddy Heat reestablished that line of scrimmage. He was explosive. High ball game now 31 all first and goal Clemson at the Duke four yard line a minute and two left clock rolling Clemson with two timeouts Duke has none Whitehurst man in motion handoff goes to Rembert kicks his way to the four and a nice tackle made by you know it Ryan Fowler at the four yard line <laughs> you're right you know it good linebackers on both sides I mean this has been what a game for, for defense. Oh, I, I mean, tell just, you. just all, on both sides of the ball, man. Rodney Thomas and John Leak for Clemson. Ryan Fowler, Jamie and Small, yeah. Brendan Dewan for Duke. Yeah, it's a cliche, but you know, you say you don't want to have a loser in this game. These teams have both earned the right of victory. Clock rolling, 24 seconds. Clemson will take one more shot here. Here's Whitehurst to the top. Takes the throw, passes incomplete. Intended Ooh. for his tight end Williamson. Risky. Yes. That stops the clock with 12 seconds left. Now, do you kick it here? Do you run one more play? 12 seconds left. You have two timeouts remaining. You know, I again don't take my word for it, but, but I kick. might try to attack it, attack the uh, with, with the size of their receivers. You know, try to get a stop route in the end zone. But you know you. Well, you lean on your kicker. That's why you feed him. That's why you're on scholarship. Aaron Hunt is on. It's in his hands now. It'll be a 22 yard attempt out of the hold of Jeff Scott, and Clemson will call a timeout before it happens. To either A, talk it over because it's third down. They get one more shot at it. Or B, kick the field goal now and see what happens when Duke gets the ball with very little time left. The Sitco ACC Game of the Week has been brought to you by your neighborhood Sitco. Proud to support today's athletes. Sitco, we know you. By Ice House. At Plank Road Brewery, we'll make the Ice House, you make the ads. For details, go to icehouse.com. By Geico Direct, the sensible alternative. And by Motel 6. For the lowest rate of any national chain, call 800 4 Motel 6. We are back in Durham. Here's the situation. 12 seconds left to go. Clemson and Duke are tied. Clemson will attempt a 22 yard field goal off the foot of Aaron Hunt to put themselves ahead with very little time remaining. There's the holder Jeff Scott. He's a backup quarterback you might note. But I think Clemson's going for the kick here. Third down and goal from the four. Kick is up, and it is good. Clemson takes the lead. Aaron Hunt with his second field goal of the day. He's two for three on the afternoon, and Clemson leads with eight seconds left, 34 to 31. 
Boy, there's so many things that can go wrong. Great snap, hands. As we get a chance to watch this operation from ground level, he kicks all the way through it. Good follow through, splits the upright. Again, the execution, though, of Charlie Whitehurst to push this team downfield. And a key run by Rembert. But there, yeah, no, that was the, that was the run. But there were ever a case where a man, young man, deserved the game ball. Yeah, it's Charlie Whitehurst. Yeah. No doubt in my mind. He's passed for over 450 yeah. yards. Dejection on the Duke sidelines right now. They've come this close, and if the final eight seconds slip away with no change in that score, they'll go 23 straight games without an ACC win. The young. They are. They are a good football team. You know, and people say, what are you, what are you talking about? I just watch them work. And you know, maybe last week wasn't indicative of it, but today was. In my mind, the NC State game was, in my mind. And they're going to drive people nuts, and they're going to win ball games here. And everything that they're doing to invest in football is well worth it. They built a nice football facility, the Yo Football Center, which was fund, funded 50% by former football players here at Duke. But, uh, exactly. Which means they're achieving beyond the game. Yeah. You know. But today, it's another close call for the Duke Blue Devils, unless they can bring this one all the way back. The Clemson Tigers with an amazing comeback, down two touchdowns. And Charlie Whitehurst becomes the hero of the day throwing three touchdown strikes in the space of two minutes and 18 seconds. And there's the kick grounded there by Duke. With 15 seconds left, or eight seconds left to go, they get it at the 15-yard line, and they have time for one play, maybe two. And there's Charlie Whitehurst. What a day for him. Whitehurst with the best day of passing in the ACC. A scoring drive, nine plays, 56 yards, two a 21-yard field goal. On a free kick, if the receiving team first possesses the ball on the ground, no time elapses from the clock. The clock is correct. First down. That's a good explanation yeah. by Jim Knight. There were no timeouts remaining for Duke. The ball was down. It was not. There was no attempt to advance it. Good explanation to the crowd. Eight seconds left to go. And 84 yards to get it in the end zone. Maybe something to the side gets it out of bounds, but it's all got to happen right here. Yeah, it's just rough. Yep. Four wide outs. Clemson in a prevent. Three-man rush. Smith to let it go. Down the middle of the field. It's up for grabs, and it's intercepted. Eric Meekins, and this game is over. Meekins comes away with the interception to end this game. Charlie Whitehurst has the big day. Aaron Hunt kicks the game-winning field goal. The Clemson Tigers stay alive for bowl, con bowl contention. We'll be back after these messages from your local ACC station. The Clemson Tigers escape with a 34-31 win over the Duke Blue Devils. With a rally from two touchdowns back, Aaron Hunt would put the Clemson Tigers up for good with eight seconds left. He nails this 21-yarder, and the Tigers win it by a score of 34 to 31. Well, Charlie Whitehurst had a great day for the Clemson Tigers, 34 of 52, 420 yards. For Mike Hogwood, Doc Walker, I'm Steve Martin thanking you for watching this afternoon. You've been watching. Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference football. Next week, we'll be in Chapel Hill, Clemson, and North Carolina. Goodbye from Durham.